legendary hero. In other words, an absolute ruler. It is said to be very powerful during a certain era. There is something that can make a person tremble just by hearing his name. There was a king who founded an empire and there was a leader from a large organization. Since ancient times, there have been stories of someone reverberating through the ages. Those who defeated demon kings, those who cured illnesses and saved many people, and those who were less suited to all of them and only aimed for absolute power. A child thinks it's pathetic and wishes they would just destroy themselves. He was annoyed because he had been trained arbitrarily since he was ten years old. If he didn't like their actions, they would give him a beating. If he could survive their test, he would end up being thrown into a pit of flames, and they would then boast that it was for his good. The wounds accumulated in his soul slowly along with this place, the Hall of Heroes. And now he will soon be separated from them. They called Davy still weak, and Davy called them grandmothers who had lived thousands of years. They got angry and became angry but were stopped by another hero. They were angry but soon they fell silent. They then said goodbye and asked him not to forget them all his life. Without saying anything, Davy turned to leave. The heroes felt sad about Davy's departure. Davy smiled and waved his hand, saying that he hoped they never met again. Finally, Davy returned to his comatose body. He felt his body stiff. He couldn't even open his eyes properly. But in the end, he gave up. He has finally returned as the weak and outcast prince, Davy Al Roan. The Round Kingdom is in the eastern part of the Tionis continent, the first child of a useless king from a lowly kingdom. That's him, Davy Al Roan. He began to think about why he had been so stupid in the past. He thought his happiness would last forever, and because he lived in a peaceful world, he was unaware of his situation as a prince. His mother was killed by a poisoned cup. He could become a target at any time, and because he was weak, he was abandoned by his family. Davy decided he had to recover his body first because everything else could be done later. He then smiled and determined that he would face them all with this body, a body that has been trained by heroes for thousands of years. In the past, Davy was crying. He was then found by someone. He then asked why so serious. He sat down and said he had heard of Davy's situation about them beating him up so badly this time. He laughs at it. Davy said if you want to make fun of him, just do it because he didn't say anything wrong. At first, they laughed and smiled. But when they realized Davy was useless, everyone was disappointed. They see it like an insect. Davy felt uncomfortable, but he was too scared to say it. He said he was very fed up. He had come to this place against his will, so he didn't know what to do. The man then said maybe they were in shock at the truth, because they were too living in their pride. An irritated Davy asks what a hero is. But the man asked back, isn't that something they think about day and night? He then scowled at Davy. He decided to help him. Picking up Davy, he said since it was now family, he would take care of it. Davy was getting annoyed because he didn't even know the guy. The man then told him that his name was Hercules. In other words, master of defense. And starting today, he will train Davy's body. But hearing that name, Davy was stunned because he felt like he had heard that name before. Davy, who was lying down, asked how long it had been since he regained consciousness. The only person who took care of him all this time, the only person who came to this room, was a maid. Davy felt a little annoyed because there was only one maid, but he thought he should at least be grateful because there was still someone who wanted to take care of him. Davy still couldn't move freely, and at most, he could only stand on his own. But apart from that, there was something Davy had to confirm. Davy checked the calendar and found that it had been six years since he was in a coma. It has been six years since he was shot in the back. Davy was determined not to go back to being a miserable person. To prevent that, he must immediately recover. Davy clenched his fists and was about to start using heel, but nothing happened. Davy was confused by that. While in the Hall of Heroes, Davy was taught about divine power by a woman named Freya. At first, Davy had difficulty casting healing skills on his now stiff body and had been in a coma for six years. But after several attempts, he succeeded and was able to heal some of the damage to his body. He was finally able to walk again even though he was still a bit stiff.
Because he was carried away by the happy atmosphere, Davy shouted out the window and was noticed by his maid when he was posing at the bedroom window. The news that the prince had woken up from a six-year coma spread widely. A current queen who poisoned Mother Davy came along. Davy's mother was once a queen, but because of malice, she had to die poisoned by the current queen. His name is Lines Barriet. The queen asked as if she didn't know about the person who shot her from behind, even though the culprit was her son. Davy looked at the queen's son with a cynical face and said he didn't know what to do with the person who tried to kill the prince. But the queen said the case was closed a long time ago. Davy thinks hard about his revenge plan. But for now, he decided to relax and recuperate. Davy started shaving his head and practicing in his room. He trains physically as well as magic. He tried to restore his abilities while in the Hall of Heroes Temple. He even used magic to bathe. Little by little, Davy's abilities returned. He then talked about the costs involved in taking care of food. But even all the gold was corrupted, and even the existing gold was not enough to uproot the grass that was starting to grow. Only one maid takes care of the mansion and Davy. And what's more, the payment the maid gets is not at all commensurate with her work. The maid's name is Emmy, and she is very loyal to six-year-old Davy. He looks after this mansion and also Davy the comatose prince alone for very little pay. Davy started to move. He started to organize his finances first. He moved to administration because if he didn't straighten out his financial problems, it would be impossible to even eat tomorrow. Davy went down to the finance department, which was supposed to take care of the palace's finances. Davy asked the person in charge there. The cost that Davy should have received was 500 gold, but it was not even 100 gold that he received. They reasoned that it was all for the maintenance of the palace, but in reality, the floors started to have holes and grass started to grow on the floor. All the money is in corruption. In this situation, Davy was sure they would throw the blame on someone else. On the way back, Davy asked Amy to fetch a sword. Amy was afraid of the request. Davy assures him he's not going to cut people down. But inside his mind, he intends to cut down a creature that can barely be called a human. Due to his vulnerable position, he believed that if he killed someone, he would be called mad, and they would exile him immediately. He had no intention of falling prey to them. When she returned, Amy was surprised to see Davy carrying the dead boar. Davy reasoned that he found it in front of the palace. He lied because he caught it himself. But that would make no sense. Davy began to frequently go to the middle of the forest and absorb various manna from nature to restore the manna that was still mostly sealed in his weak body. A skill for absorbing manna from the natural surroundings is called manna breathing a technique taught by the bastard wizard god named Odin. Davy hates Odin because Odin's training makes him seem to die every second. With this breeding technique, which should be collected within a month due to body limitations, it can be obtained in just a few days. If a kingdom learns this technique, it is sure to be a major revolution. Davy will never reveal this technique to anyone. He will use it alone. Moreover, this technique cannot be learned easily. It took hundreds of years to learn it. But it was fortunate that he could learn it because of the large time difference between the Hall of Heroes and the real world. While Davy was practicing, someone was watching him. Davy realized that it must be the queen's job. In essence, the magic of a priest class would not be able to use offensive magic, and a mage would not be able to use holy healing skills. Then the necromancer class shouldn't be able to use both of them. But Davy is different. The teachings of the gods make Davy the strongest human like no other. He can use all three, healing, destructive magic, and awakening or necromancer powers. Davy started using magic to revamp his blood flow. This continued until evening, and he ran out of strength. Five months have passed when Davy has become a master in magic. But he has become a master of everything. He spread mana throughout the palace so he was aware of every move in the palace. A priest sent by the queen tries to check on the prince's condition. But seeing the prince just lying on the bed, he didn't even try to check with his divine power. He only said that the prince's condition was so weak that it was dangerous to use holy power to heal the prince for now. 
He didn't even try to check on Prince's condition, let alone try to heal him. Some words of contempt for Mala came out of the priest, making Emmy say to keep her words in front of the prince. But he felt humiliated, and he slapped Amy right in front of Davy. Not only that, he said to have them come to his room tonight for an apology. Davy's hands were veined at what was happening in front of him. The priest's arrogant attitude could no longer be tolerated. His anger was boiling, but at this time Davy held back his anger. He ordered Emmy to accompany the priest. As they exited, Davy took a sword from the next room and casually walked out of the room. While the priest was talking and intimidating Amy, Davy was already sitting behind the window directly behind the priest. Davy made a small scratch on the priest's cheek slowly but surely. The priest was confused because the prince was able to wake up. He assumed that the prince still couldn't get up from his bed. Davy told Emmy and asked Emmy, What is the punishment for insulting the prince? He replied, Execution on the spot. Davy immediately slashed the priest's neck while smiling emotionlessly. He only provides punishment for insulting the prince. While the neck was slashed and blood was pouring out of it, the priest was still chattering. Then Davy slashed the head from the body. Hearing this incident, the queen came to Davy's place and slapped him. But Davy said, Is the level of a prince lower than a priest? So it's not worth executing a priest who insulted a prince. Queen then said that Davy was as stupid as his mother. There is no proof of what he said earlier. Hearing that, Davy gave off a murderous aura that made the queen sit down. But the queen's guard assassin troops immediately moved to protect the queen. Davy didn't continue because it would be an immature, stupid act if he slaughtered them all. For now, after eliminating the priest and giving a warning to the queen as expected, rumors started to spread. They said that the prince had gone crazy after waking up from a coma. While he was relaxing in the yard, a royal administrator named Besphus arrived. He brought in several corrupt people who were corrupting royal funds during this time. Davy also asked Besphus what the usual punishment was for those who corrupted the kingdom. Besphus answered that usually the sentence was beheading on the spot and execution for his entire family. With a smile, Davy said, Okay, do it. Besphus is one of the people who is very loyal to Prince Davy. Incidentally, he is also an important person. He was the head of all the subordinates under the king. A great man was on his side. Suddenly, two important people came after that. They are the second princess of the kingdom and the fourth prince of the kingdom. They both loved Davy very much. They have always been irreplaceable brothers. The fourth prince was named Barris, and the second princess was named Winley. The two Davy twins then invited Davy to go outside the castle while taking a walk, because since the coma, Davy had never left the castle grounds area. Davy also agreed. When they got there, they were also scheduled to meet the king, Davy's father. But Raja didn't even look at Davy. He just said while turning his back to Davy, He says it's good to see you healthy. One of the people Davy hates is the king, his own father. When his mother was poisoned to death, even the king did nothing. The three of them returned home to Castle Davy. But when night came, they camped for the night. On their way home, after chatting briefly with his siblings, Davy asked them to rest. But actually Davy felt the killing intent targeting him. Davy took a piece of dry wood and did a light warm-up, using the wood where the wood flows. Davy used camouflage skills and hid himself from the assassins. The assassin with other skills could see clearly. They were the skilled assassins of the kingdom. When the assassin masters jumped up and down on the wooden branches, Davy jumped at them from above with a slash called Sharp Swing. Four assassin masters had their bodies split into pieces. Davy says people who see his abilities will not survive. The Pegasus who taught Davy swordsmanship said anything could become a weapon. Even fragile wood can kill hundreds of people if used by the right person. Davy slaughtered the assassins until finally there were three left. Davy told them to tell the queen, even if she doesn't act like that, I will still destroy everything she owns. At that time, the assassins immediately ran away thinking they had been forgiven. But Davy laughs and says, but lies. He used super speed, and suddenly David was right in front of the assassins. All of them were slaughtered as fast as lightning. Ratu knows that 20 of her assassins died, but she thinks that it was not Davy who killed them. 
He thought that Davy had very strong supporters, because what he sent was not just an ordinary assassin, but one of a group of great assassins. A big match will be held, namely the Continental Swordmanship Competition. Where is the gathering place of the whole kingdom? Davy's two brothers took part in the competition, but Davy decided not to participate and was just a spectator. One of the people who took part in the competition was called the Sword Princess. The Sword Princess was named Elena de Fallon. One of the reasons Princess Elena became famous was because she held the legendary Sword of God, called Caldirus. Hearing the name of the sword, Davy immediately remembered that his first sword teacher, Diwa Harris, was the sword that Harris had used when training Davy for hundreds of years. Before the competition was held, there was a noble banquet. David also attended. While Davy was dancing with his younger brother Winley, a prince approached and held Winley's hand. He is the prince of the Boltus kingdom named Valetian. He really likes Winley. Because Winley didn't like Valetian, he ignored him. But Valetian got emotional. Davy immediately twisted the prince's hand while saying, Sorry, my hand slipped. Feeling insulted, Valetian challenges Davy to a duel. Princess Elena came and she said she saw what was happening, so she said this duel was inappropriate because Valetian was in the wrong. When Davy saw the figure of Princess Elena, he immediately said, Harris! Harris is Davy's nickname for the sword god Harris, his first sword teacher. Princess Elena is very similar to Harris. The difference is that Harris is a man, and Princess Elena is a woman. However, when Princess Elena was talking to Valetian, Davy told her he accepted the duel. Everyone was shocked to hear the words of Prince Davy, who had just woken up from a coma. In fact, he was called the Weak Prince. Hearing this, Valetian was happy because he himself had quite high sword skills and felt that Davy was nothing and just a crazy prince. When the duel started, Davy suddenly shot and appeared in front of Prince Valetian. He swung the sword so recklessly that Davy's blade slipped from his hand. But seeing his sword slip away, Valetian laughed it off. As he laughed, a punch hit him in the chin. It was as if Davy didn't do that on purpose. Valetian was sprawled on the floor. Everyone thought it was a coincidence. Davy swung his sword haphazardly to look like an amateur, but a careless attack could knock Valetian down three times. After that, Davy deliberately did that to embarrass Valetian. People started talking about Valetian, who could fall three times against an amateur. No one realized that the technique used by Davy was not actually swinging a sword carelessly, but the technique was called drunk sword. Like someone swinging a sword when drunk, the technique belongs to Davy's second swordmaster named Doc Go Jun. This swordsmanship technique was created to humiliate others, making it seem like others couldn't do anything about it. I don't know how many times Prince Valetian fell in front of everyone so he couldn't hold back the feeling of emotion and super-huge embarrassment. He also coated his wooden sword with mana and intended to kill Davy. But Davy made a stupid move and knocked Valetian back to the ground, embarrassing him even more. Princess Elena saw the sword play, and as if there was a strange movement from the random movement that had been defeated by Davy, she returned to Valetian's room and went berserk. No joke in his room, he really wanted to kill Davy. When the desire to kill was strong, a demon came who offered Valetian help to make his dream come true. Her name is Sharyeo. He is a vampire. The day arrived when the continental competition was held. Prince Valetian's smile looked quite strange. It seemed like he had been possessed by a demonic figure. This match is really cruel. Even the inaugural match was Boris who went straight against the Valetian prince. Davy himself did not participate in the competition held this time. The match started. Valetian seemed to have a much higher sword skill now compared to yesterday. In his heart, Davy said something was strange. Even a genius couldn't have developed like this in one night. Valetian put pressure on Boris, but Boris also seems to have the skills that allow him to grow. As the duel progresses, Davy's little brother has now grown into a great man. Boris makes his most visible attack, but it was avoided by Valetian with a terrible expression, road advance that has been controlled by the devil. Immediately the sword headed for Barisi's body. An active mana shield from Boris's body and protecting him from death made Valetian's sword blow away. The mana shield was instilled by Davy before the match for the worst-case scenario like what's happening now. 
The match has been stopped. Even though the mana shield is active, Baris is still being attacked. The jury called Valetian a foul for trying to kill his opponent. In this match, attempting to kill was a capital offense. This action was considered a declaration of war. A Valetian underling approached him and told Valetian to explain what exactly happened. There must be a misunderstanding. But Valetian lost his identity. He went crazy and killed his subordinate. Valetian turned into a monster. Mages started attacking him continuously using magic, but their attacks had no effect. On the other hand, Davy is down. He was angry because Valetian tried to kill his beloved sister. But Davy could control his emotions. Everyone prevented Davy from going down because they knew Prince Davy was a weak person who had just woken up from a coma. Instantly, Valetian ran towards Davy and attacked him, but it was disturbed by Princess Elena. Princess Elena came in her full armor. Princess Elena threw a powerful barrage of attacks at Valetian, and he was knocked back heavily, but the attack seemed to not work. Valetian is increasingly crazy because his consciousness as a human has disappeared. He turned into a reincarnated vampire and then cast a skill. The air around was enveloped in a red aura. This air absorbs the life energy around it and makes that power its own. Princess Elena sat down affected by the effect. Meanwhile, Valetian increasingly becomes a terrible monster. Even though Princess Elena is weakened, she can still maintain her consciousness in the blood policy. It's amazing, said Davy. Even though he had no effect at all on Valetian's skills, Davy touched Elena's body and gave her holy magic so that her condition improved. Davy tells daughter Elena to step aside and leave it to him. But Princess Elena held Davy's hand and said, Why you have no effect with this skill? Davy just answered Dunno, because he doesn't have time to explain it now. Princess Elena said, Don't talk nonsense and leave this situation to him. Elena said someone who couldn't feel mana like you could be killed immediately if hit. Davy was still silent while crossing his arms. Davy hit Princess Elena on the back of the head and made her sit down, but she didn't faint. Davy says just stay there and watch then. Davy took a stance and moved behind the Valetian monster and attacked it with attribute attacks. This attack made the monster Valian flying backwards quite strong and powerful. Princess Elena just gaped at what was happening in front of her. Right now he was very confused as to what exactly was going on. Davy turned around and told Elena, give him the sword. But Elena says the sword is broken. It turned out that what Davy meant was Princess Elena's divine sword. Because Princess Elena herself couldn't master the sword, Davy revived a legendary sword named Caldiras. Even the contractor herself, Princess Elena, doesn't yet have the ability to activate the sword. Without further ado, Davy cast a skill called God's Resonance, so he slashed the other dimension in the sky. The dimension where the demon vampire who controlled Valetian was hiding was opened. High-class servants appeared. He attacked Davy with his vampire skill, but Davy just dodged it very casually. Davy tries to provoke the vampire. He remembered Odin's words, one of his teachers, to defeat a top-class servant. He had to make him lose his cool first. After that, just finish it. The vampire said that Princess Elena, who inherited God's sword, lost and couldn't do anything. So what can this ordinary prince do? Davy smiled and said that God's technique was not that sweet and easy. It took thousands of sword swings to get the technique. Davy jumped on top of the vampire and launched a large attack called Great Claymore, Grand Mountain Splitter. Seeing the huge attack with God's sword technique made the vampire unable to hide his shocked face. When detained using his blood shield, it was completely useless. Davy also released the magic skill ninth rank final holy magic, which cannot be achieved by anyone, a rank that can only be used by gods. This skill is called Saint Sanctuary. Light fell from the sky and turned the vampire into dust. Davy fainted after casting this skill because he ran out of mana. There is a lot of discussion about Prince. But the conversation was not about the weak Prince who slaughtered the vampire, but about the Prince who had a stigma given to him by God behind his back. The only person who saw Davy use his powers was Princess Elena. Usually, this stigma appears for people who are chosen directly by God. The appearance of the stigmata on the lying Prince when the blood police disappeared made the whole country excited.
Davy chose not to tell the true incident to his younger brother, Winley. Davy only reasoned that he fainted at that time, so he didn't remember anything from the previous incident. Then after that incident, in front of Davy, a status screen similar to a game appeared. He could see the status of his sister, Winley, and also the status of other people. When Davy saw someone, he was surprised by a voice that said, Looks like you really enjoy being able to peek at other people's status. He was surprised he could just let go. The appearance of a small but beautiful woman with a pair of cute horns appeared in front of Davy. Seeing the woman's figure, Davy immediately remembered when one of the heroes painted a woman in the Hall of Heroes. Previously, Harris said that the woman was one of the people Harris taught swordsmanship, and it turned out that she was a demon king of hell named Perselk, who was sealed by Harris in his sword. But at this time, for some reason, the demon king's form became small. The demon king Perselk is tied up by Davy and interrogated. He said about the stigma that emerged behind Davy. However, with a little coaxing, Davy finally untied him. Persek was actually the main cause of the war between the human and demon worlds in recorded history, but somehow he felt different from the figure in front of him. Currently, Eve's existence and aura were completely harmless. Because Davy used a high-level holy magic skill on the Caldera sword that sealed him earlier, he was freed from within the sword. However, Perselk said he was a little interested in Davy's figure, and from now on, he would go with Davy. The demon lord Persek negotiated and formed a partnership with Davy. Previously, everyone was excited about the sword competition between continents. However, after the attack on the competition and the emergence of stigma in the country, everyone's excitement immediately turned to Davy, the owner of the stigma. Davy became a famous person at this time. Davy and his sisters headed into town. On the way, Perselk asked Davy if he didn't want to be the owner of the sword of the god Calderas, because Davy was more suitable to have it than Elena's daughter. Davy only replied that he didn't like taking candy from children. Davy meets the king and queen. They congratulated Davy on being voted a stigma, but surely the queen congratulated with a vein in her head and bit her hand fan. Davy had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the king. Of course, Davy asked about why he ignored when his mother was poisoned first. The king only answered that being a king is difficult, there is much to consider. Initially, the king wanted to make Davy the successor of his kingdom later, but even before the king said that, Davy had refused to become king and his successor. He said he would not take the same path as the king if being a king was the same as him. Davy immediately left without saying goodbye, switching to the conversation between the kingdom's best assassin and the guildmaster. So basically, the assassin was given the task of taking Davy's head. The assassin said it wouldn't be difficult to take the head of the royal boy. It wasn't long before the guild leader felt the killing intent coming. Suddenly someone was behind him and threatened him. The chief immediately knew that the person behind him was the master of the assassins. In fact, he didn't believe that there was a master assassin in this small kingdom. The guild leader asked for help, but there was nothing left of the kingdom's best guild. Everyone had died including the best assassin who wanted to take Davy's head. Davy asked the guild leader to give him all the files of the nobles who had a direct relationship with the royal family and also a list of their sins. Finally, with frightening threats, Davy got all the information. After returning to his place, Davy checked the files and Perselk said it looked like there would be a pool of blood soon. Davy also answered that it would not be a good idea if he killed them all. Actions should be as noble as possible. No matter how famous aristocrats were, they would definitely have opponents. Perselk asked Davy what exactly Davy's goal is now. Davy only replied, Isn't it clear to keep his family safe, not starving and have a comfortable place to live, not to be carried away by the problem of living healthy and long life? Listening to Davy Perselk's answer, he rolled around laughing. He didn't expect to get an answer like a grandmother's answer from Davy. Davy decides to leave the kingdom. He will create a territory and command power there to live peacefully, and also carry out his hobbies there. He will create an empire. He did not wish to continue as king the legacy of his hated father. But Davy wants to create the greatest empire in history. But at this time, Davy only said he would regulate a region. 
He didn't want to be a king. The king and queen agreed to send Davy to a territory and establish his own rule there. But actually, the king and queen had different reasons. Ratu herself chose to send Davy away because all her plans failed to kill him. Even after hiring the best guilds, the seven best guilds were slaughtered in one night. And not only that, all the super-secret files that were also stored there were also taken. So for now, sending Davy away is the best option according to the queen. Meanwhile, the king's true intentions could not be ascertained. Either he wanted to make Davy the man he deserved and prove he could develop a territory, or maybe there was another reason. The territory where Davy will rule and be sent is called Hines. But this area is a remote area that is touted as a cursed land. It is called that because it is a barren place where no plants can grow there. However, when he heard that he had found an area that was considered impossible to develop, Davy felt very happy because if he could turn this place into a paradise, then everyone would be surprised. Marquez Palatres is the person who supports the prince. He was his mother's protector in the past. But he felt like a failure because he couldn't protect his mother from death. But Davy knew that Palatres would not give up looking for evidence of his mother's death. Someone who has high loyalty. The journey began. Davy arrived in the cursed area of Heinz Land. They arrived at the gate. Davy saw that the head guard's hands there were covered in bandages. Davy was immediately able to conclude and realize that the area had just been attacked by monsters. Usually the monster that attacks is definitely a type of goblin. Davy asked the guards to gather everyone in the hall because he wanted to say something. Then Davy told everyone that tonight they would attack the goblin base. Those who heard that were shocked. Of course, it is clear that in terms of strength, they are completely incapable of doing this. It was like a suicide attack. But Davy said firmly, trust him. Or at least, if you can't believe it, believe in God's stigma. He will protect them as he protects himself. After that, Davy gathered troops to join the attack, numbering only 13 people. Of course, that was a number that was completely insufficient to carry out an attack on the goblin base. Not to mention that the guards were all exhausted because just last night their territory was attacked by goblins, and they had to defend their territory. Finally, Davy found the goblins' headquarters. The goblins are having a party in the village that has been destroyed by the goblins. Davy then attached an arrow to shoot a goblin in the head. Davy's subordinates who saw this immediately panicked. They said that there was no way they could fight the goblins. Directly, Davy tried to calm them down and just said, Take it easy because he won't let them die. He immediately issued buff skills and support for the entire troop. All the buffs are given to each troop that comes. What's more, this buff is the sixth buff skill called Amplification Buff, a buff skill with a very high level. Maybe no one else can use it. After receiving the buff, they were all extremely excited. Instead, this raid became a goblin massacre. Davy felt sorry for the goblins. Davy's main goal in doing this is to instill fear and awe in everyone, but his hopes even exceeded all that. They highly praised Davy for the success of this goblin slaying. The other residents in the city had expected that this attack would fail. Of course, they only brought ten bodyguards and three citizens. But while expecting this, Davy's troops returned. Everyone was amazed at the success of the 13 people used by Davy to eradicate a goblin village and even rescue the residents who had been kidnapped by the goblins. Davy says his next target is to wipe out the few remaining goblin villages near his territory. Within two days, everyone deified Davy. In fact, they deified Davy more than God himself. Davy is considered a helper and a miracle by them. Davy's greatness was talked about in every corner of the city without stopping. After overcoming the goblins and gaining the residents' trust, Davy headed to the second problem, namely about the cursed area. Davy thinks about how to remove the long-lasting curse from the land of Hines. Davy and Perselk started walking around the closed area. He tried several magics to overcome the curse but failed, and what appeared in front of him was instead an encryption magic. The magic requires a very complicated combination of coding because this effort has not been successful and Davy also thinks there seems to be somewhere the key to this curse. Finally, they decided to walk again until they found a ruin. 
Inside the ruins, there are many golems guarding it. Seeing that, Davy's eyes immediately shone brightly because the head of each golem contained a diamond that was quite large and looked very expensive. Davy finds a money field. After that, at the end of the road, Davy found a very large pure crystal and it seemed to be the core that made the land cursed. Encryption coding magic is back, but this time it looks like Davy can work it out. After finishing some coding, the area's curse was lifted and it started to rain. The residents were shocked not to see the rain coming down, because how long had it been since the last time? It was raining with the magic crystals obtained in the ruins. Now Davy could manipulate the movement of the weather throughout Heinz's territory. Davy gathered the residents. The locals now revere Davy more than God. Davy ordered them to work on the farm in four days and they would plant a plant called moongrass. Davy will start the farm by planting moongrass in each region. To do that, Davy once again buffed all the residents so they had the enthusiasm, stamina, and strength to do it in just four days. Moongrass is the magic core plant of the magic tower or the main ingredient for making potions. This country simply didn't have the ability to grow moongrass themselves, so they just imported it from the neighboring continent at an exorbitant price. But Davy was going to do something that would shake the whole kingdom by planting this moongrass. Davy started looking for moongrass seeds. He interacted with nature spirits and obtained moongrass. The planting process begins. Four months passed. Rumors began to spread throughout the kingdom about the rumor that the Heinz region grew moongrass. It threw the whole kingdom into chaos. They started trying to send messengers to check the truth. Heinz is now a fertile area filled with moongrass plants. Amy reported that there were around 20,000 moongrass leaves going into storage and 10,000 leaves for sale. For the record, the price of moongrass leaves is more valuable than gold. The price range is four moongrass leaves equivalent to 100 gold. Not to mention that production has not stopped until now. But what is certain is that with the 10,000 leaves sold, they will get around 250,000 gold, or the equivalent of 5,000 platinum coins. For ordinary people's living expenses, just one gold coin per month is enough. What a profit that would shock the entire kingdom. Everyone in all corners of the kingdom, and also the continent, considered Davy to be an idiot prince who couldn't see reality by planting moongrass even on land that couldn't grow bean sprouts. But with their assumptions and underestimation, that was why the moongrass farm plan had gone so perfectly without outsiders interfering. The preparations are complete, said Davy, inviting. Let's spread the excitement across the continent. Moongrass is sent to the market twice a month for sale. This number was a lot, but for the eastern and western continents it was still quite lacking. Moongrass was a key ingredient for alchemy magic, and also a very important ingredient for making potions in the church, so an uproar would definitely cover the entire continent. But Davy realized that if he sold a bombastic amount, the price would surely decrease. By limiting distribution, as if the item has limited stock, it will make demand even higher. And again, Davy would spread another rumor wherein the rumor said that Heinz's master owner of Moongrass had fallen ill. With that strategy, there would be lots of people coming to visit all over the continent. But of course, their goal is business. Davy ordered everyone to rest, then he called Monmeter, the head guard. Davy put down a potion and said something to him. Monmeter went home to rest. Not long after that, while he was resting, someone came and he was a level four master of the Green Tower named Hallis. He wanted to meet Davy, but Munmeter said that Davy was lying down because he was tired from work. Hallis then tried to approach Munmeter by giving him a bribe. Munmeter was very surprised. He wasn't surprised by the large number in front of him. He was surprised because this was all exactly as Davy had predicted Davy said, that if someone gives a bribe, just take the bribe without hesitation. After that, show him a magic elixir and tell him that we have produced around 10,000 elixirs and are ready to sell. Seeing that magic elixir, Hallis's hand trembled violently. This is a tier one elixir, the elixir of the highest grade. Hollis never even saw this. Davy wants to spread other rumors about how great the future prospects of this area are which will make people settle in the area. And later, the Heinz territory will become a trading central.
Mon Mater reports what happened to Davy, which is as predicted. Davy just said, just take the bribe for him to distribute as a bonus. News spread among the master towers across the continent, even reaching the ears of the grade that was the Grand Master. He knew that even this grass was just the beginning, and that there would be other surprising things the prince would come up with. He recalled Princess Elena's question to him a while ago. Princess Elena asked whether it was possible for someone to be able to kill a high-class servant with just one blow using Calderas, and he didn't even have a contract with Calderas. The great sage simply answered that it was impossible. That would be impossible unless he was the sword god's best disciple, or he was the sword god himself. Davy runs an elixir auction held in his area. It aims to make everyone in the region and the continent come to Heinz and make the Heinz region popular. An uproar ensued because of this auction. Everyone wanted to get their hands on that treasured tier one super pure elixir. Davy said that if everything went smoothly, Heinz's annual income would be one million gold, which was too much for a small area. A god in the Hall of Heroes told Davy that he had left something underground beneath his house in an area that had not yet been explained. He said if Davy could perfect it, then he could use it or sell it. What is clear is something great and very valuable. Davy immediately left. He was accompanied by the demon lord Persek, and he didn't want to be guarded by anyone other than Persek. Davy heads to the hometown of Surtur, one of the gods who said that he hid something under his residence thousands of years ago. Upon arriving at the gate, Davy gave up his fake identity as the gatekeeper. Immediately he was not allowed to enter for various reasons, but it's clear the guard underestimated him greatly after seeing Davy's fake identity. Davy stepped back and he sat down on a rock. He observed the state of an old man who came. The grandfather said that he would not be able to enter if he did not give something or a bribe. The grandpa gave some actual gold coins to his grandson to let Davy in because David looked just like his grandson. Davy refused and he immediately got up and headed to the guard. Davy immediately said that the entrance fee was not collected from residents. This is an illegal act, said Davy. They all thought Davy was a runny kid who was trying to give advice and held Davy's head like a child's head. This is the final warning, said Davy. Suddenly the old man came and asked the guards for forgiveness but that made the guards fed up and they tried to cut down Grandpa. Davy kicked his sword and it flew upwards. He then said that taking money from the people was the same as stealing from the kingdom, and the punishment for royal thieves was execution on the spot. Davy casually slashed the guard's head. The other guards were shocked by what happened in front of them. They tried to surround Davy, but Davy casually cut each of their wrists until one of the nobles who owned the place arrived. Seeing Davy, he immediately realized that the person in front of him was the first prince of the kingdom. But as if he didn't want to be blamed, the nobleman said that Davy came to the noble area without an official letter, and that was an abuse of power. Without saying much else, Davy immediately slashed the nobleman's head until his head rolled on the ground. After that, Davy and Lengang just entered the territory, even though the ruler had been executed. But the one who executed him was the royal prince. On the way, Davy talked to Grandpa about his son. The grandfather told about the suffering and oppression of control in that place. They finally arrived in an area called Valharashad, the most historical place there. The place Davy was looking for was the place shown by a god when he was in the Hall of Heroes. He designed a strict code for the secret place. Davy says the whole place is encrypted, so he tries to crack the password Surtur set. He abandoned his will to leave everything to the person who discovered his inheritance. Davy grumbled and said he was trying to act as a pirate king. The secret door opened. Davy and Perselk get in there. At the end of the road, Davy saw a simple room like the usual blacksmith room. Suddenly a very bright light shone from a child who was in the corner of the room. Sir Tour is a person who has the nickname Thousand Day Blacksmith. The nickname he received after he did forging for 1,000 days without rest. And another nickname is Devil's Blacksmith, or some call God Blacksmith. The box was opened, and Davy found two nameless twin swords. One can cut life, and the other a sword can cut death. These twin swords were unrefined swords. The ultimate work of a God Blacksmith and that sword was created to find its own master. Therefore, the sword has not been perfected. 
Davy said he needed fire, but not just ordinary fire, but fire from the dwarven furnace to refine this blade. After obtaining the last treasure of Lord Blacksmith, Davy heads to the kingdom to meet the king and nobles. He was asked to come over to talk about Moongrass. Of course, all the nobles wanted to take advantage of Moongrass to get into their own pockets. At the end of the hall, Davy suddenly meets Carlos, one of the princes who left Davy paralyzed and in a coma. The prince and queen are responsible for the death of their mother. Of course, the grudge against him was huge, but Davy could bear it for now after training the gods in the Hall of Heroes. Carlos told Davy look at him being arrogant because of success with just one business. He says if people like him can do it, then everyone can do it too. Davy casually laughed and said, did he come just to say that? Davy then said that he looked how jealous he was and asked if he even realized how influential this action of his was. Davy told Carlos that was the reason everyone called him an idiot, a prince who can't escape from his queen's armpit. Provoked, Carlos tried to throw a fist attack on Davy. Of course, Davy took it like a baby spanking and Davy slammed it and stepped on Carlos's chest. Then Davy flicked Carlos's forehead so hard it knocked his head back. It was a flick that could make his head bleed. Carlos ran away and said, just wait because he will take everything he has. Davy laughed too, but his laugh was hideous enough to give Perselk the chills. She asks, what is he laughing at? Davy replied, he was giving a gift, a worst sin in all corners of the kingdom. It can't even be recovered by any magic. Davy said, just look at it tomorrow in the meeting hall. Davy smiled a little. A meeting was held in the hall. The nobles were even babbling to themselves about moon grass, like turning the business into a royal business or something. The strange thing is that the conversation was carried out with each other without involving Davy, the owner of the moon grass, and the lord of the place, as if they were talking about their own business. But the king stopped the chatter. The king says that they have to gift Davy something, and anything will be granted, as his effort this time is bigger than all his achievements in last ten years. The income of Moongrass is greater and far greater than the entire kingdom's income for a year, said the king. Davy replied he didn't know what to do now, so he asked for time to think about this. After that, the nobles continued their chatter about Moongrass having to be tied up as a royal business. Someone appeared and asked why they were busy talking to themselves and said they had to tie up the moongrass business for the kingdom without talking to the owner first. He said they had no right to interfere with his ownership. He initially looked like he was on Davy's side, but after that the duke named Varietta took out a piece of paper which he said came from the Holy Kingdom. In the letter he wrote a request for Davy to go to the Holy Kingdom to verify the appearance of the stigma and give Davy the title of saint. After that, he said that if Davy went to the Holy Kingdom, then the Heinz region would be without a ruler, so a new ruler would have to be appointed to take care of Moongrass. He then recommends the second prince, Carlos, as the new ruler of the Heinz realm. David smiled faintly and said in his heart that he already knew that he would definitely come and make Carlos his successor, none other than his own grandson. After that, he intended to use it for personal gain. Carlos laughed arrogantly while looking at Davy. After that, he stepped in front of the king as if he would definitely become the ruler of Heinz's territory. With a confident face, suddenly a strange sound came out of Carlos's mouth like the sound of a frog. The whole hall was shocked. No joke. Because Carlos had the courage to speak frog language in front of the king. Even though he is his own father, Carlos is very shy. Then suddenly Carlos screamed like a crow and suddenly shouted again like a rooster. Persec guffawed at Carlos and asked him what he was doing. Carlos screamed strangely using various animal sounds. The king was getting angry, he said how dare he insult the royal meeting and told Carlos to quickly get out of his presence. Then he ordered Prince Carlos to be put in a cell and given him probation until his next order. Carlos tried to call out noble names, but they all ended with woof woof or croaks. The king was even more irritated, but suddenly Carlos's hat fell off. You can clearly see his smooth forehead and some hair scattered on the floor. Little by little, his hair fell out. Davy smiled and told Perselk that was the power of the kingdom's strongest sin and the kingdom's strongest curse. Davy told Duke Varietta that his grandson Carlos didn't seem old enough to be a ruler. 
Davy continued asking why he was also talking nonsense like them, and why he also held a letter from the Holy Kingdom that even the king didn't know about. After that, Davy contacted a high priest from the Holy Kingdom using a magic ball that functions like a video call. In addition, the high priest who was contacted was a high priest who was quite influential there. Davy got to the point and said, How about Pope's decision? Everyone was shocked to hear the word Pope because it was the highest position of the Holy Empire. The high priest later apologized to Davy and said this would not happen again. That short word explains it all. It meant that Davy no longer needed to go to the Holy Kingdom. It turns out that previously Davy contacted Pope and said that neither he nor the Heinz area could be separated and that the moongrass business would be over. Hearing that Pope and Holy Empire immediately took action as they urgently needed moongrass, everyone in the hall was speechless. Their plan failed Davy had his revenge on Carlos, a revenge that hurts more than death. After that, Davy called his area using a magic ball to check the situation there, and they said that the guests who intended to do business in their area had started setting up temporary tents. And because there is already a permit to build, it will soon be a grandiose building, and it is likely that one by one will be built in the area. Little by little, the Davy area began to develop into a business area. But Davy said that to make this a perfect area, it would take at least ten years and that's not something that money can overcome. As for his own money and property, Davy already has a lot, maybe even starting an empire because his moongrass business continues to grow. Then Davy also said it seemed the time had come for him to run a second business. He visited the continent's greatest technician, Rox. The full name of the area and tribe that Davy will visit is the Yellow Rock Tribe, and Davy immediately executes his strategy. He headed straight to the area of the Yellow Rock tribe. This is the name of the village located in the northern part of the kingdom. They actually don't really like humans. They are picky creatures, but he has something that will be difficult for them to refuse. Dwarves are also known as people who are not very tall. Their average is 100 to 130 centimeters. However, they are stronger than humans and have high heat resistance. Indeed, they were born as true blacksmiths. When compared with elves, which are considered legendary because they are rarely seen, dwarves themselves still maintain relationships with humans, even though they themselves don't like humans. So to enter their village, there are restrictions. What is allowed is someone who is equal to the king or his representative to enter the main gate of their village. And lifting those restrictions is Davy's goal for the growth and success of his business. When Davy told the king his intentions, at first, the king refused because dwarves really don't like humans. But Davy managed to convince the royal party. Davy also managed to enter the village of dwarves because his status is indeed a royal prince, and he also didn't forget to bring the favorite drink of the dwarves, namely, barley beer and some meat. The dwarves from the building side were already way above normal compared to the human country. Davy meets with one of the elders. He could see that the elder thought this was troublesome. After learning Davy brought a gift of drinks, he became a little friendly. It was considered polite by him, so he also respected Davy. Davy uses his skill, namely observation. Davy found very important information. It is said that he hopes to be able to participate in creating the flare of beginning, which is the holy sword of the dwarves. Davy immediately remembered a brief conversation between himself and his teacher the god blacksmith. In the Hall of Heroes, the blacksmith god said that he had made weapons when he was not very skilled. But the item meant a lot to him, and he created it with the dwarves. So it was like the first collaboration between humans and dwarves. The name of the weapon is Flare of Beginning. Davy didn't expect to hear that name again here, and Davy himself really understood how to make holy swords. He did want to borrow this dwarf's power to develop his realm, but he also had another goal, namely to borrow the dwarven's sacred furnace to create the twin swords left by Surtur. But, of course, if the situation is still like this, borrowing their stove is absolutely impossible because they are very stubborn. Davy then headed straight to the bar. The bar is a place that is never empty. Dwarves' hobbies are drinking and gambling, so if you want to win them over, you have to leave here first. 
Davy immediately sat down with Chairman Golda, who was holding his head. Davy opened the conversation and asked if he could taste the dwarf's alcohol. He was warned that the drink was very special and different from human drinks. Listening to Davy's words, the whole bar became excited. Because this human wants to taste their drink. Without replying to their words, Davy immediately drank a full glass of the drink and said it wasn't that bad. Actually, that drink was very disgusting, Davy said to himself. Davy is not a big drinker, so he doesn't enjoy alcoholic beverages. Davy once again challenges Chairman Golda, and with every challenge, there will be stakes. Chairman Golda says he will grant Davy one wish if he wins, but if they lose, Davy must immediately leave their village. He said it wasn't that he didn't like Davy, but that they had their own problems here too. Davy said to himself he took the bait. Several hours passed. Chairman Golda held her head because she drank too much. But Davy was normal without the slightest drunkenness. Chairman Golda lost badly in a drinking contest with Davy. They really don't believe Davy is human. But actually, Davy won't be able to get drunk, because his holy mana status has reached the highest. So all debuffs and effects will be immediately neutralized and purified if they enter the body, as well as poisons of the highest level. Davy then started by asking why Elder Golda always looked dizzy and irritable. He told a short story. Their sacred sword, namely the flare of beginning, was damaged, and again at this time where his father and himself had to take care of the flare of beginning. So he was really confused because it was the highest treasure of their tribe, which had been passed down from generation to generation for more than 3,000 years. Davy said so his request was, let him enter their workshop. When they arrived at the workshop, all the workers there were excited because humans dared to enter the dwarf's workshop, which was considered a sacred place. To the extent that the first chairman, Golda's older sister, asked why Golda brought the human there. Golda just told her sister that this was a bet, so no matter what, she had to accept it. He asked for help. Believe in him, brother, and believe in that prince. Golda's older brother was named Golgoda. Golgoda agreed because Golda was also an elder, so they had to respect her decision too. Davy was given a warning that if he crossed the line, his head would come off. Davy just answered that he would remember those words. A giant sword measuring more than two meters is called Flare of the Beginning, or another name is Sword that Doesn't Cut, which is more suitable. The sword that cannot cut is the sacred treasure of the dwarves. Even though it wasn't a perfect holy sword, it could be seen that the dwarves were frantically repairing the sword, which looked already damaged. Davy watched him carefully. He told Perselk that the sword could no longer be repaired. Even though it was made in the same way as holy swords, it was different from real holy swords, and their weakness was that they did not last long. The Yellow Rock tribe panicked because when it was their turn to guard the sword, it broke. Where they were, there were all kinds of tribes, namely Yellow Rock, Black Rock, Green Rock, and the like. Suddenly, the tribe from Black Rock came. They said it was an insult to Yellow Rock who damaged the sacred sword. The first elder sat down because he realized that the sword could no longer be repaired. Davy came in front of Golgota and said whether he was really a master blacksmith. A true master blacksmith feels the soul of each of his works and will appreciate it, but he discarded that thought from the start. Davy stepped in front of the sacred sword and said that this sword could no longer be helped as he smashed his hammer against the sacred sword until the sword split. Everyone was silent and couldn't believe what they were seeing, and everyone shouted what he was doing and wanted to report this to the kingdom. They hold Golda responsible for this. Davy raised his tone and asked the first elder if he really wanted to solve this problem and whether he thought his ego could solve the problem. Davy says this sword has protected their village for 3,000 years and asks, shouldn't they let go of an item that has done its job honorably? But instead, they insist on fixing it, and they still call themselves a blacksmith and ask, since when did dwarves become pathetic like this? Davy's words really cut into everyone's insides like a sword thrust that caused more pain than the actual wound. Davy took the sacred sword and threw it into the fireplace. Everyone shouted no. Turning to the past between the blacksmith Dua Surtur and Davy, Surtur said, Every craftsman's work has a soul. 
if he sees someone who does not respect the soul in his work, destroy it without mercy. The dwarves were furious. They wanted to kill Davy for it. Davy said seeing their treatment of the sword, then he should have done this and told them not to denounce the sacred item any longer with a serious face. When the other dwarves wanted to attack Davy, the first elder stopped him. He asked if they wanted to make them look pathetic. In fact, they all realized that the flare of beginning no longer existed. But their ego is too big. They were very stubborn and dwarves were notoriously stubborn. The elder from Black Rock approached Davy and said that he was acting like this because it had nothing to do with his race and asked him who he thought he dared to meddle in their affairs. He told Davy not to be too proud of himself if he didn't know anything about holy swords, but Davy said if he didn't say he couldn't make it. Even the Black Rock elders said don't joke. They can't do anything. Davy went to the front of the stove and immediately used his hammer. When training with Sir Tour in the past, Davy had made a sword like the flare of beginning thousands of times. That is, even though he could not match the precision of the god Blacksmith, you could say that Davy's forging ability was almost equal to that of the god Blacksmith, and it could be said that Davy was the second greatest blacksmith in the history of gods and humans. Davy used a forging technique that even the dwarves had never seen in their lives. Davy combines a variety of methods that make their jaws drop. In an instant, Davy managed to recreate the holy sword flare of beginning. And finally, Davy asked how. They started to sweat. Even though its outer appearance was different from the flare of beginning, the radiance of holy power it emitted was extremely powerful. This is even more powerful than their previous heritage flare of beginning. Instantly, there was a big change from the dwarves who were initially very arrogant. Now they are very humble. Davy was immediately considered master of masters by the dwarves. They asked Davy if he could teach them the skill of ordering from the god, Blacksmith. Davy answered, of course, but not for free. Davy took out his twin swords. It was finally time to borrow the furnace of the dwarves to perfect the greatest twin swords created by god, Blacksmith. Davy took out the sword he had been eager to refine, the sword left by the blacksmith god. The dwarves were stunned by the beauty and aura emitted by the twin blades. They hear doubtfully asking if he made this. Davy also answered that the person who made this died a long time ago, thousands of years ago. They began to suspect what Davy meant. As they expected, the person who made these twin swords was the blacksmith god. They considered the blacksmith god as the ultimate role model. They must have been very surprised. Davy said that this sword was like liquor, where the liquor becomes more delicious the longer it is stored. So this sword also has changes with age, and the strength of this sword is already more than ten times stronger than when it was just made, and it's time to give it the final touch, said Davy to the dwarves. He needed their furnace to do that. Davy started thinking about the ingredients. He had hoped to use adamantium or at least orahalcum, but this wasn't the right place to get such a luxurious material. However, because this was a dwarf's workshop, at least he could get high-quality materials. Chairman Golda said that he was allowed to use the workshop as he pleased. And again, the chairman of Golgota gave something that stunned Davy. Golgota took out a bone from the treasure chest. It was the bone of an elder dragon. Davy's eyes lit up seeing him. In fact, it is much rarer than adamantium and origalcum. Golgota also said that he had kept the bones from generation to generation because no one could process them properly. But the chairman of Golgota entrusted the object to Davy. Not long after that, other dwarves flocked to provide assistance to Davy. They offer workshops, and again, they also offered their inheritance to Davy to make part of his twin swords. Some offer 100 grams of adamantium, there are also those who offer orahalcum. These are all of their family's inherited treasures that have been kept for generations. Davy's initial worries about a lack of ingredients turned out to be meaningless, but he asked why they gave away their inheritance so easily. They said that at least they could puff up their chests because their inheritance was used to perfect the masterpieces of the blacksmith god. It's time for Davy to start his work. We then move on to explaining what the Hall of Heroes actually is. The Hall of Heroes is a place built from the subconscious of heroes, like a place where heroes rest after working during their lives. And thanks to Odin, 
In the Hall of Heroes, Davy had the opportunity to touch Elder Dragon and Sir Tour, the blacksmith god, said that the bones of Elder Dragon were the highest material for making holy swords. Davy was also asked to learn how to process these heirlooms. When studying it first, Davy felt lazy because why study objects that in the real world are impossible to find? But he was wrong. The lessons learned in the Hall of Heroes were very useful, and he would apply them right now. Davy forged with all his ability because there couldn't be a single mistake. Such rare materials will be damaged. Davy's current forging concentration had reached the maximum limit. After quite a long time, the twin swords were perfect. After the twin swords were perfect, Davy gave the names of the two swords. One is called the Red Flag, and the other is called the Blue Flag. Hearing that name, Perselk said Davy's naming taste was really bad. Davy tests Red Flag's sword. He swung the sword with no effort and no mana whatsoever. But that casual swing could split the material sharpener in half, making Perselk surprised. Next, Davy took the Blue Flag sword. He tried to slash at a boulder, but it went right through him. The Blue Flag sword is a sword that can cut mana. This means that Blue Flag can cut anything that doesn't exist in the real world. Davy thought that he had made something that did not make sense. Davy came out of the workshop and found the dwarves guarding ahead. They said Davy had occupied the place for four days and four nights without eating. He said it was really great concentration. And when the dwarves saw the results of the sword, they already felt like they were under the influence of a god. In fact, they are already prepared to die without regret because they have seen the best masterpiece. After that, Davy still stayed there for a while, teaching the dwarves perfecting the flare of beginning. Davy taught them like teaching kids who didn't know anything about forging, which meant they all controlled their pride about forging and were really passionate about it. After many days, Davy's work was finished. There, Elder Golgotha spoke casually with Davy. He realized that Davy had come to their place not only to perfect the masterpiece of the Blacksmine God, but that Davy had indeed planned to lend the power of the dwarves to build his territory. The Golgotha elders immediately offered their services. He vowed to serve Davy forever. Davy was very happy to hear that, and he didn't expect to be flattered like this. Suddenly, a scream interrupted their conversation. Someone shouted that an intruder had entered the village. Not long after, an attack headed straight for Elder Golgotha's face. Davy swiftly brushed aside the attack. Davy realized the throwing weapon that was attacking them was a red assassination knife. Prince Carlos is almost crazy because of the curse that was given by Davy before. He kept screaming like an animal and his hair was falling out little by little so that Tenga was now bald. Carlos immediately realized that it was Davy's doing. He was very angry with Davy, no joke. Not long ago, someone named Face came and he said that before their performance was not good in his mother's eyes. Because of that, he wanted to change that view. Face offers him a contract and he also lifts the curse Davy instilled on Carlos. Carlos started to explain Davy's identity. Carlos says Davy is a stigmatized owner and there seems to be supporters behind him. Face said he asked Carlos to calm down because he was still human. He had already sent one of his best maids to Davy's place. He was sure he should have been taken care of. Carlos was now laughing. Davy blocked a flying shuriken. Davy realized that the red assassination was not just any weapon. Even that was a blood technique. And the only ones who could use it was the power of a vampire, namely blood energy. A demonic beast was perched on a cliff. It was a top-class demonic beast. The demonic beast immediately attacked with an attack from its mouth. Swiftly, Davy held him back with a very strong barrier. The demonic beast approached Davy and used the blood aura technique. A surprised Perselk said that even among the top-class vampires, only a few could use this skill. Perselk told Davy to be careful because he was different from demonic beasts in general. Davy, with incredible speed, immediately lunged at the demonic beast and punched it until it floated in the air. Davy took out his twin swords and he used red flag, then launched a technique called Demonic Spirit Blade, 24th draw style. The demonic beast was immediately cut to death. Perselk says he's not dead. Davy replied that he knew that. The demonic beasts would regenerate their wounds, 
So the way to destroy them, if not to split them into small molecules, was to attack them with holy power. But Davy didn't use these two methods. Davy took out his blue flag sword, then slashed casually. The demonic beast was destroyed instantly. After that, Davy felt something. He says next time hide properly. Davy uses blue flag to slash the dimension and the person's hiding place is wide open. With lightning speed, Davy was in front of him and Davy said, Peekaboo, bastard. The vampire ran as hard as he could from Davy's pursuit. Davy chased casually while playing around. The vampire was already running away in panic. If he was caught, he would definitely die, he said. Davy slashed the vampire and jokingly said, Don't try to escape after eating. The high-class vampire was really played by Davy. Their race is an honorable race, meaning they far exceed humans in many aspects. But he was surprised what this person was up to. Apart from him slaughtering Class I demonic beasts with great ease, he also played around with them until he got bored. He thought that he felt their assessment of him was a big disaster. It's clear this person is not normal. After getting tired of playing, Davy sat on top of the vampire while interrogating him. He couldn't move at all, and he screamed all over his body. Davy said that he should check something before killing him. The vampire said that he was a loyal person, so Davy wouldn't be able to get any information from him. Davy, without further ado, used the skill Black Magic Flame Interrogation, a skill for torture. A torture that was so painful, it was like burning all the elements in the body. Perselk says, isn't this too cruel? Davy replied if he should feel sorry for the people who tried to kill him. Davy started asking again who he was. At first, the vampire insisted on keeping his mouth shut. But after being threatened with using flame integration again, he immediately answered that his name was Pedkid. Davy asked why they were targeting Davy, and it was because Davy had defeated a vampire before. Davy immediately asked who gave him the order. But before he could answer, Pedkid blew himself up. Davy said it didn't look like he blew himself up on his own. Davy also said that the curse that had been placed on Carlos had been lifted. It seemed like there was a great bastard behind all of this. After that, Davy and several dwarves returned to his territory, namely Heinz. And the dwarf elder who saw Heinz said he would make Davy's residence a place suitable for the world's best blacksmith. Some of Davy's subordinates were shocked to see Davy's closeness to the dwarves, something that was very difficult to find being this close. Davy returned to his bedroom and wanted to rest, but suddenly under the blanket, someone was waiting. A black shadow appeared under Davy's blanket, and in his heart Davy said that something like this had happened several times and made him annoyed. People send women to lure Davy, but he has also sent a warning to them not to do it again. Davy then thought how rotten they were to send a child to him. Persek said his heart was not strong seeing her cuteness. Davy asked Emmy who let anyone into her room. Emmy replied that she didn't know anything. When he was about to take the child away, suddenly the little boy called Papa while pointing at Davy. Things started to get confusing. The red-haired child hugged Davy while saying Papa, and it turned out that another blue-haired child came out. Davy thought maybe, and sure enough, they were Davy's twin swords that could change his physique. The red-haired kid was Davy's red sword named Red Flag, and the blue-haired one was called Blue Flag. Who would have thought that a sword could turn into a human? When Amy gave food to them, Davy thought that they could also eat like humans in general. Davy also tried something. Davy summoned Red Flag and Blue Flake, then asked if they could return to their original forms. They easily understood Davy's words and turned into swords again. Red Flag asks Davy to eat some cake, but Davy says he'll get cavities later. Not long after that, Winley came over. Davy told Winley that these children were adopted children who were cared for by him. Winley really liked their cuteness. Winley said that he really admired his older brother. His brother could turn a dead land into a land full of treasures. And what's more, Davy was able to recruit dwarves who were said to be very difficult to meet, and rarely left their village. Winley started talking about the main thing why he was meeting Davy now. He wanted to ask Davy for help in using the stigmata. There is a friend who is currently dying. He protected Winley when the bandits attacked. All the treatments and even the healers had been used, but they had no results at all. After telling that, 
Winley cried and fell asleep. Davy knew how serious he was about his request. After being shot, his friend experienced strange symptoms, such as a very high fever, and then blue spots began to appear from all parts of his body. Davy pondered while looking out the window. Davy said high fever, blue spots, symptoms. There is only one disease that is on his mind right now, and the problem is that this disease should not be on this continent and don't even exist in this world. Davy talks to Persec. Some time passed. Davy was sitting at his desk, and suddenly Davy said that there was no need to waste time and just get to the point. Davy said that to something in front of him, and it turned out that in front of him, there was someone who was doing camouflage skills. He was a cloaked man and seemed to have assassin class. Davy did ask the organization for help in finding information. Davy also asked him to check on Portna, who was none other than his younger brother Winley's current personal bodyguard. Currently, Debbie is asking for various information about Portna before she got sick and after. Davy gives him a bag of money as a down payment, but the assassin says he won't accept the money now. He will take his reward after his work is finished. In his heart, Davy said it seemed like he wanted to build a good relationship and create a good image for him. But there was something strange about the assassin in front of him. Davy discovered this using his observation skills. This person's name is Jack, but there is a hidden explanation that says her real name is Ina Helishana and her real gender is female. Not to mention that she is a dark elf. Davy was curious about why he was hiding his true identity. Not long after, the assassin left and said goodbye while releasing a smoke bomb. In his heart, Davy said, Why don't you just go normally? After two days had passed, Davy was ready to go to see the patient. The problem was that his younger brother insisted on joining even though his condition was not good enough to participate. But suddenly, someone came. When the man came, Winley was very enthusiastic. That person's name is Ulysses. Seeing the closeness of his sister and this person made his brother's instincts rebel. The man introduced himself. His name is Ulysses, a fifth magic circle and a member of the Red Tower. Ulysses said that the princess often bragged about this place and her brother, so she really wanted to visit the Heinz area, which was known throughout this continent. It could be seen that this man was very close to Winley. That just made Davy even more annoyed. Davy asks why he knows his sister. But Ulysses explained that while on their way to Heinz, they met on the road and they traveled here together. Ulysses said that he could use teleportation magic, so it would save time for their journey if he helped. Teleportation magic must be used using a special, very rare artifact. But Red Tower had it. So, like it or not, Davy agreed to help him. They arrived at their destination in an instant, using teleportation magic. When he arrived, Davy immediately smelled something strange, the smell of burnt protein. This smell is very similar to the smell when living creatures are burned. Suddenly, someone came. He moved troops in a strange manner. Winley also asked whether the ruler of the Ordem region was Barris. The person answered that he wasn't there at the moment, so temporary authority was entrusted to him. When Winley called the security guard to take him to Portna's place, but no one came. The person in front of him said that right now all the guards are in quarantine. So in this area, there is a widespread spread of a deadly virus. Virus with high fever. Blue spots which ends in vomiting blood, then death. So like it or not, many people have to be quarantined to suppress the spread of the disease. Winley says there's something strange. David went alone to Winley's bodyguard, Portna. He lay limp with an oxygen cylinder beside him. When Davy arrived, he immediately realized one thing. He said this was a rhinitis flower, a flower that grows in extreme areas and has very concentrated poison. Portna's body temperature has reached 39.7 degrees Celsius. If you do this, your brain cells will burn. His skin was cold like a corpse, while his internal organs were extremely hot. Davy said he didn't think why this disease existed in this world. Perselk answered what he meant. Davy said the name of this virus is Melting Acceleration Virus. This should be a virus that comes from the other world. Davy pulls out a straw and says we have to make the antibodies as soon as possible before it's too late. But suddenly someone grabbed Davy's hand. He said what he was doing and outsiders were prohibited from entering here. He was Baron Gorneo, 
an officer in the Central Disease Control Unit. Davy introduced himself. The Baron answered that even though he was a prince, he couldn't be here. Gorneo also said which mask was his mask. He then told Davy to wear a mask, because this was another deadly virus outbreak. While they were chatting, a patient was already dying and almost died. But the disease control team injected painkillers. Davy also said that if he touched it, he would die. Davy opened the patient's clothes and said the accumulated blood was blocking the lungs. He held the person's body and buried a straw in his lungs by coating the straw with holy power. However, the medics who saw Davy's actions were considered arbitrary to pull his shirt and ask, what do you think of a person's life? Not long after, the person who had the straw stuck in was breathing normally again, and other medical staff said that the patient's heart rate had returned to normal. The clogged blood returned to normal. Davy took a little blood from the patient as a sample, and he told Baron who was gaping at what was happening in front of him. Davy says, don't compare him to the high priest, because he is immune from all diseases. Davy left after that. Davy said that he had to make a vaccine as soon as possible to treat this epidemic. Not long after, Jack the informant arrived. Of course, with the camouflage technique again. But again, Davy realized his existence and said that he didn't need to hide. He was confused as to why this prince always knew of his whereabouts. Jack handed over his work and Davy's earlier request. But after that, Davy asked him again to find some of the materials needed to make a vaccine. Davy met with some of the city's disease response members. Davy asks to leave the medication to him, as he will find a cure soon. At first he was opposed, but after some negotiations, Davy finally got the chance. The Baron, who strongly opposed Davy's request, kept watching him, watching his every move. He couldn't believe a prince could find a medicine that even experts of all experts would be overwhelmed with. Davy said in his heart he knew in their eyes he was a lump of dirt pretending or pretending to be a rock. Davy went straight to the patient and said this disease is a variant virus that causes temperature changes and melts the inside of the organs. First, it will melt the muscles of the body, the joints of the young bones, then the whole body will be relieved if that's all that happens, Davy said. But when the bones of the organs have melted, the internal organs will also melt starting from the rectum, testicles, kidneys, large and small intestines, and when that happens, the fluids in the body will come out of the holes in the body, and that's what causes the blue spots. Within the Baron's heart, he was saying how he could know all the process of this disease so accurately. Davy's doubts were diminishing. Davy also said, Anyway, you just trust me. Four days later, Portna's color has improved. His black skin returned to its original state. Baron could only gape at all this. He could not believe the word Baron while sitting down. Everyone had given up, but he didn't expect a miracle like this to come. It took them three, three years to find a cure. But Davy found it in just four days. Absolutely crazy, said Baron. Ulysses was amazed by Davy's extraordinary behavior. He also communicated with the communication artifact to his master in the Red Tower. He told many very extraordinary things from Davy. The master just said it seems you have found a very extraordinary person. But he asked what about the mission? Ulysses is assigned to oversee the area's disease control team because their behavior is highly suspicious. While talking again, suddenly a tremendous explosion occurred. Ulysses instantly realized the explosion had taken place where Princess Winley was and panicked. He said that even though Prince Davy was good with medicine, he couldn't fight, so he had to protect them. On the other hand, Davy was surrounded by a very large army. Davy, with a smile, asked what was wrong with the Baron. Ulysses is seen using his fire and water magic against a group of people who prevent him until he finally meets someone named Count Colio. Ulysses also asked where Princess Winley was. Turning to the troops blocking Davy, the troops said that they had to follow orders and kill them, including the Baron there, so don't try to put up a feudal resistance. When someone attacks, Davy immediately blocks and wards off the sword with his bare hand until the sword breaks, and with his other hand, Davy uses level 5 magic called Zero Charge Thunder and makes the person burnt and also dies. Davy said if they tried to kill someone, they should have prepared to be killed too. 
Davy looked at them with a sharp gaze. Davy, without further ado, immediately slaughtered a group of people with the same skills, leaving charred corpses lying around. Jack is also called Davy. Suddenly, a previously hired assassin arrived. Clean up the corpses here and kill everyone who tries to enter this place, said Davy to the assassin. Jack replies this will also be included in the costs. Davy agreed. Suddenly, Davy felt that the tracking spell that had been implanted in Winley was moving. That means Winley was kidnapped. Sensing that his younger brother was in danger, Davy immediately burned the remaining troops there with thunderous lightning skills and then headed straight outside the building. But outside the building, there were also quite a lot of troops waiting. Davy immediately shot and entered the middle of their crowd. The enemy immediately tried to provide resistance. They said he didn't have a gun. Davy also answered that he didn't have that weapon, according to them. Davy was seen taking out his twin swords. A red attack penetrated their bodies. A precise attack targets their heart and vital parts, so the chance of survival is zero percent. Red flag slaughters them one by one. Davy said he used a technique called Air Nurse Sword to make them fly freely. This is how they should use their ego. Davy cast the Ego Skill Divine Sword Movement, Sword Dance. Davy unleashed his two twin swords, slaughtering every individual in front of him. Davy had full control of the sword. He doesn't even need to bother chasing running enemies because his sword will chase and cut them down. Switches to Ulysses, who is facing Count Kaleo. Ulysses is actually a strong wizard, but it turns out that Count Kaleo is much stronger. Ulysses really didn't move in front of Count Kaleo. Count Lington brought Winley out in the future. Ulysses is furious that they kidnapped Winley. Count Lington said it seemed like he harbored feelings for Princess Winley. Ulysses was finally defeated and will be used as an experiment. Count Lington's real name is Lincoln Bornishiad. He was born in a kingdom called Ryutis, a medical kingdom on the eastern continent. He is a genius who has extraordinary potential, but the things he does make him subject to royal law and prohibited from using any medical measures. That didn't stop him. At the age of 15, he kidnapped 200 people and then carried out thousands of experiments. He succeeded in developing a drug from that experiment. Ten out of 200 of the test results survived. But those who survived became disabled and died. A few days later, he was the one who justified various means to achieve his goals. A person who kills someone is called a murderer. Killing dozens of people is called serial murder. Killing hundreds of people is called a massacre. But the funny thing is, killing thousands of people is even called a hero. He received an honor for his extraordinary discovery. But few people know that to make one medicine, thousands of people are needed as sacrifices. Count Kaleo said that it was likely that by now the people under the other buildings had been finished off, and surely Prince Davy would soon be brought here as well. He was very confident in saying that. At that time, Jack slaughtered everyone according to Davy's orders. Previously, the Baron told Jack why he let Prince Davy go there alone. He would not be able to survive because there was a great knight named Count Kaleo. The levels of the knights were different, and Count Kaleo was certainly at a very high level. But Jack got one thing straight for him. He said that he was indeed a prince just like the other princes, but actually worrying about that person was the most pointless action in this world. At the same time, Count Kaleo will cut off Ulysses' one hand because of an order from Ulysses so that Ulysses can't cast his magic skills. Count Lington laughed and said that there was a disaster that no one person in this world could handle. When Count Kaleo was about to cut Ulysses' hand, someone from behind Ulysses shouted that they were wrong. Davy came at crazy speed and immediately released a skill called Way of Demon King Ugra Destruction Punch. A very strong punch smashing fierce towards Count Kaleo was followed by successive punches which made Count Kaleo vomit quite a lot of blood and was knocked back strongly. Davy said to himself, Oh, did he go too far because he didn't intend to end it in one fell swoop? Davy hopes that he is still conscious. Davy then approached Ulysses to issue a Class 7 healing skill called Holy Magic Sanctuary. Ulysses immediately recovered completely, even though he was dying. Indeed, Stigma users have great healing abilities, Ulysses thinks. Davy went straight to where Count Lington was beside Winley. Davy immediately cut one of his hands and kicked him down and down and saved Winley. Winley woke up, but suddenly Count Kaleo came from behind 
and immediately tried to slash them with his high-level sword technique. But unfortunately, his attack was blocked by Davy's flying red sword. A high-level swordmaster trying to attack from behind was so embarrassing. Count Kaleo was shocked to see Davy's extraordinary sword. He immediately jumped in front of Ulysse and asked Ulysse to protect Winley as best he could. Ulysse asked, wouldn't it be better if they ran away now? Davy told him not to worry because he wasn't as weak as he thought. Count Colio stood in front of Davy. He said that it was an interesting sword and that it was very dangerous for a beginner like Davy. Therefore, he will take the sword after killing him. Davy said that he had to ask the sword's opinion first for that. He immediately dashed forward in front of Count Kaleo and threw another fist skill at his stomach. Because Count Kaleo was so persistent, Davy said that if he really wanted to be a punching bag, that was no problem either. Davy continued his continuous punch attack. His punches continued to attack the abdomen. Count Kaleo was really in pain, but the body of a high-level swordmaster was different, even though Davy himself had only used a few percent of his strength. Count Kaleo, who was angry, shouted to stop aiming for his stomach. Davy said in his heart that his endurance was okay, but he was a little disappointing for a high-class swordmaster. Davy also revealed information to them. Davy said that the disease pathogens that spread in this city were their doing. That's the information that is obtained according to the results of Jack's work. They were all shocked because Davy knew about it. If this got out, the disease control unit would become a target for the nobles. After being beaten, Count Colio finally realized that Davy was not a beginner in swords. At least he was already at the swordmaster level, and moreover, he could even use advanced holy arts. In theory, it was impossible for someone of his age to gain this much power. Perhaps he might even become a miracle in this age and be recorded in history later. Count Kaleo thought he had to finish him off before he grew any stronger in the future. Davy also said he wasn't going to punch him in the stomach again this time, so he could rest easy. Now Count Kaleo was rushing at Davy with all his might. Davy dodged his attack with great ease and said but a lie while smiling innocently. Davy took out the way of the Demon King's smash technique, double punch, and directed back to his stomach. Count Kaleo blows very far back and Perselk says from behind that Davy is cruel. Davy finally brought Count Kaleo to his knees and finally collapsed. Count Kaleo really is who he is. After Count Kaleo passed out, Davy replied that he should be the one surprised because the last punch I showed you to destroy you to pieces. But he really managed to hold on. Ulysses and Winley approached Davy. Ulysses says he really didn't expect Davy to be this strong. But one person who escaped was Count Lington. Ulysses says his mana isn't enough to catch up to him. Davy let him take care of the rest. Davy cast a teleport skill. Ulysses was surprised because at first they thought that Davy was just good at swords, but he could even cast magic. Even this magic is very difficult to cast without the help of holy items. Davy can get it out with just a flick of the hand. Davy teleported them elsewhere so he could focus on finding Count Lington. Count Lington actually ran as fast as he could to avoid Davy while saying, You monster! Count Lington ran toward an altar. Davy found him and immediately slashed him with Aura's sword. But Davy's attack was repelled by a very strong barrier that surrounded Count Lington. Count Lington laughed very contentedly. He said Davy would not be able to destroy this barrier. This was an absolute defense at a thunderous price, a last ace Count Lington. Davy said it was like compressed air. Davy stood in front of Count Lington and between the barriers, Count Lington was very confident. He started to challenge Davy. Why didn't he just try to cut it with his magic sword? This barrier has the ability to transfer himself out and go missing. Count Lington says he won't let Davy live in peace and he will make sure he captures Davy alive and puts him in his experiments. He also said that Davy would not be able to save anyone because the vaccines that Davy made were all in his hands. Count Lington Laughing was very satisfied. Davy was still silent. Then he said he was done talking because he was getting bored. Davy slashed with a barrage of double slashes between his swords. The barrier was broken, and Count Lington split open and died. Blue Flag has the ability to cut anything that isn't in the real world. After that, it didn't take long for a loud sound to be heard. Davy said Count Lington was still quite troublesome until the end, because he tried to destroy all evidence.
A few minutes later, the royal troops came to this city. It was Prince Baris, the ruler of this region. They were all amazed when they saw the corpse of the knight lying charred in the city square. They asked what really happened. This is actually worse than reported. Prince Baris immediately looked for Baron Gorneo because he was worried about him. Baron Gorneo is one of Prince Baris's trusted subordinates. He asked the Baron what happened, and the Baron said Prince Davy and Princess Winley were here, and that extraordinary Prince Davy could create a vaccine that he had failed to create for years, and he could make it in just four days. When asked whose bodies were outside, Baron Gorneo answered that they were his subordinates, Count Coleo. They tried to kill them after the cure was found. Baris becomes worried about Davy and Winley. The prince immediately panicked because he thought something might have happened to the two of them. Suddenly, Winley was behind Prince Baris. Ulysses said it seemed like the prince loved Winley more than he said. Winley was embarrassed too. Not long after, suddenly there was a big earthquake and the sound of monsters screaming everywhere. It turns out that various types of monsters such as the Chimera werewolf and others have begun to invade the Ordem area. It is not yet known why these hundreds or maybe thousands of monsters attacked this area. Davy immediately said let him just destroy it at once, but it's quite difficult to deal with them if they hide in the forest like that. Perselk said it would be better for them to retreat and set up their defense first, but Davy immediately used his level 5 skill, namely fly. Then Davy checked the air humidity. He said it was just right. Actually, the fifth circle cannot cast magic on a large scale. But with Davy now and with the help of Red Flag, nothing is impossible. Davy pointed his sword at the sky and uttered a magic spell that Perselk had never even heard of. Persek asked if it was the runic language. Davy says he will use a lightning strike. Hundreds of magic circles appeared in the sky. Davy shouted for the monsters to die. A bolt of lightning was released, which scorched the earth of the monsters. On the other hand, you can see that outside the forest, there are members of the kingdom and their knights being chased by the assassins. A soldier captain named Belus saw next to him a forest filled with lightning strikes. He thought that instead of dying at the hands of the assassins, heading into the lightning forest, he would have a little chance. He ordered his soldiers to head to the lightning forest. On the other hand, Davy knelt in the sky. He was a little tired of releasing large-scale skills which still continued until now. Perselk said, This is not something humans can control. This is magic that only gods can control. Davy told him to calm down. He just needed to finish a little more and rest at home in bed. But suddenly Davy realized that a horse-drawn carriage had entered the destruction area. Davy was surprised that there was a horse-drawn carriage here. And again, that symbol is a royal symbol. And since the color of the emblem is platinum, it means it represents the imperial army. On the other hand, Putri, who was in the horse-drawn carriage, realized that someone was flying in the sky. He saw Davy very clearly. For a long time, he couldn't take his eyes off Davy at all. Davy also saw the princess. Davy said it felt like it refreshed his mind. That means it's possible he's a spiritualist. Davy pointed his hand at the assassins who were chasing the train. Then a powerful lightning split from the sky and immediately reduced the assassins to dust. Davy flew away. But a few moments later, Davy lost consciousness and he fell. The princess apologized to everyone. He said forgive him because he is of mixed blood. They also suffer. The knight captain said what he said. Putri blames herself for being of mixed blood. They think lightning is impossible, a natural disaster. It was much more terrifying than natural disasters. They even thought maybe it was put out by someone. If it was someone's doing, then you can be sure that he is the strongest wizard on the continent. But if you think about it, it's impossible for humans to be able to cast magic of that level. It would be more suitable if it was released by a dragon who was at the peak of magic. Meanwhile, the princess said to herself that the person had black hair, a pale face, and also smelled of cherry blossom. Moreover, he exuded the aura of someone who could be trusted. Davy was currently unconscious under the trees. When he woke up, Davy saw Perselk's panicked face. Davy asked how long he had been unconscious. Perselk answered that it only took two hours, but that was definitely enough to cause panic in the Ordem area. Hundreds of disaster-scale thunderstorms suddenly occurred in front of their territory. Not long after that, Davy met Baris. 
As usual, he was very, very worried about Davy. Baris said he had actually formed a search team to find Davy, but because suddenly hundreds of thunderstorms appeared, it was impossible to enter the forest area. Baris himself was actually very confused as to why there was such a powerful thunderstorm. After returning to town, Davy met Winley and Ulysses. Ulysses looks very lethargic because he said that the vaccine was lost. But after that, Davy asked what this meant. He took it from Count Lington. Everyone's faces immediately changed drastically. That night when they asked a lot of questions that had been swirling in their heads, Davy said it was natural because he had never told them anything. But what is certain is that what he has gone through so far is something impossible for them to believe. The extraordinary sword art using aura, a martial technique that could slay even one of the highest tier sword masters, possessed a stigma, as well as an understanding of medicine that was far superior to Apothecary's own. And also, Davy used the fifth circle magic, namely teleport, when he sent Ulysses and Winley before. In their minds, they must have suspected whether this was the ability of a twenty-year-old child. Even his strength far surpassed Princess Elena's sword genius, and even his abilities far above Ulysses, who was considered the continent's greatest prodigy and a genius in magic. No one thought that a twenty-year-old young man who spent a third of his life in a coma could surpass them all. Davy is sure they won't be able to believe what he has gone through in his other dimension life for one thousand years. Ulysses asked how Davy could do magic without chanting, and again, the mana he felt for Davy was not the amount of mana that is in humans in general, and asked how that was possible. Davy smiled casually and said to himself that fortunately they didn't think that the thunderstorm was done by him. In common sense, this is impossible for humans to do. Davy then replied that it was because he practiced hard enough. They all hoped for an extraordinary answer. They looked very disappointed. Like he said before, Davy trained really hard in a short time. Davy thought to himself that even one thousand years would not be enough for him to learn everything. From dawn to dusk, he practiced mercilessly. The heroes with the gods actually squeezed training hard to the point Davy grew fed up with them. Baris answered that Davy must be joking. No matter how hard he tries, it's impossible to be like that in one year. Davy answered again. There are many things in this world that they still don't know, and he didn't say just a year. But Davy said one day he would tell them everything when the time came. In his heart, Davy said that he couldn't tell them about the Hall of Heroes at this time. All he can say to them is that he has worked hard to get to this point. For now, in this world, there is only one person who knows the real truth, namely, the Demon King, Perselk and I don't know why they accepted my unreasonable explanation. Davy thinks it's because they hope and believe that he will tell them one day. Finally, this conversation was over. But as usual, if a problem is resolved, then usually another problem will come. Red flag for a sword that has extraordinary ego and mana by using its mana like before and draining its mana a lot. Like a child who is in a bad mood, Davy tries to seduce Red Flag with his favorite cookies. But because Davy was enjoying Red Flag's cute face, Davy ended up making them cry. Perselk, who saw Loli's two children crying, immediately asked what she was doing. Davy makes the kids cry. Perselk immediately changed his body to normal human size and hugged the two of them. Davy was shocked and asked how he could change his body size. Perselk answered, How difficult it is to change body size with spirit power. He can even change the course whatever he likes. The crying red flag and blue flag called Perselk Mama and said Davy was evil. Those words made Perselk embarrassed. In his heart, Davy said that it seemed like the fairy tales and folklore that said that the demon king was cruel seemed to be a misunderstanding. After going through a major pandemic situation, the Ordem region is gradually recovering. 300 lives were lost but that is actually a very small number for a large virus. If Davy hadn't controlled it quickly beforehand, the virus would have continued to spread. Turning to Davy and his trusted assassin because the assassin had done many things that Davy asked for perfectly. Davy asked about the payment he wanted, but the assassin answered that it was not the time for him to say so and said he had to collect more performance points 
and would make Davy unable to refuse his requests in the future. Davy. So it's scary how big the request actually. Finally, one week has passed since the previous incident, and now Ordem's condition has fully recovered and is back to normal. Davy is considered a hero who helped the area. After that, they finally came home. Davy will return to his territory that is Heinz. This time, Winley went to Heinz because of Baris's request. Previously, Baris asked Davy to look after Winley, because recently the world was not in a good condition. There is a new crime, namely the kidnapping of several children in an orphanage who disappeared without being noticed, and this incident actually happened in various places including Heinz, too. So it's safer if Winley is by Davy's side who is considered strong and can really protect his sister. After a few days they finally got to Heinz, Winley asked if something happened at Heinz. Davy said someone who wasn't welcome was out there waiting. Suddenly an army came toward them. The troop chief spoke to Davy and got straight to the point. They asked permission for the princess they were escorting to meet Davy. But at that time, Davy immediately refused. Persec said if I remember correctly wasn't she a contractor woman. Yes, that's what Davy said. The precious child of the Palin Empire was roaming the small Heinz territory. Switching to an emperor from another empire named Theord Al Lindis, he was an emperor from the Lindis Empire. The emperor was very skilled at archery. He was discussing something, especially about the news about Sir Count Lington and Count Caleo, who were killed by one person, namely Prince Raun. And again, what was even more surprising was that the person who discovered the demon blood virus vaccine was not a disease control team, but a prince who also killed Count Lington and Count Caleo, namely Prince Davy. The Prince of the Round Kingdom is really a topic of conversation everywhere right now. Then someone told the emperor whether he should invite him to the palace. Emperor said it was not bad and thought of offering him an engagement with his daughter if he had this kind of achievement. Not long after that conversation, the princess in question came who had blue hair and wore a mask. Aria Al Lindis. She was a princess of the Lindis Empire and also a mixed-blood Beastman who was few in number in the Lindis Empire, whereas Beastman himself is actually a discriminated race in the Lindis Empire. The look of disdain towards the princess grew bigger. Finally, like what happened before, people started sending assassins to kill him. The newly arrived princess greeted the emperor. Stop, said the emperor. He asked why he didn't call him dad. Arya was worried because people would be even more irritated by her mixed blood existence. The emperor hit the table and called his confidants and said, should he execute them? Emperor also said to do without leaving a trace because they dare to insult his dear daughter. Arya said, don't do it because then her reputation will decrease. But it seemed the emperor didn't pay too much attention to that. He loved his daughter very much. Turning to Heinz again, Amy the maid said Prince Princess Elena of the Palin Empire begged again to see Davy. Davy told Amy to decline her request. Perselk asks if he's not afraid of what might happen next while sticking with Davy. Davy answered that he did not act carelessly. After that, day after day passed until around 12 days, requests to meet continued to be submitted, and of course Davy continued to refuse them. The knights ordered by the princess were also starting to get irritated and losing their patience. That night, Davy laughed and intended to get a high price. This is called buzz marketing. But again, the laughter stopped. Someone came out of nowhere and approached Davy. Meet you, said Elena the princess. Davy turned around and asked whether princesses nowadays have a hobby of palace parkour. Eliana approached Davy and asked him, didn't he think there were a lot of things he should talk about while he was busy? Davy asked him to calm down. Theord Al Lindis and his daughter are currently discussing something. The princess asked if her father remembered their promise that if one day his illness was cured, he promised to let him marry whoever he loved. Princess Aria said while blushing that that person saved her on the previous trip, and she really wanted to meet him again. The emperor who was drinking tea suddenly smashed his glass. Theord Al Lindis also said to Albus that it seemed like a pest was trying to land on Bunga. Albus answered, should he send a request to the guild to finish off the pest and present it to him? And the emperor told him to do that. Ha! The princess was shocked and asked her father to calm down. 
They didn't realize that the person they were talking about was the same person who solved the problem in Ordem and found the cure for demonic blood, and the same person who lifted Princess Aria's curse. But the day they met was still far in the future. There was a fierce battle between Ileana and a huge robot. The scene was chaotic. The floor around the place was cracked, and the surrounding materials were scattered. Ileana looked a little overwhelmed against it. Then she held her heavy sword tightly. Using the omnidirectional slash technique, Ileana attacked her opponent with a vengeance. Slowly, her opponent moved back because of the attacks she gave. At the moment when Ileana was about to deliver her final attack, her opponent suddenly counterattacked. The golem unleashed its power to send Ileana's body flying far backward. Ileana caught her breath for a moment. She had not expected the attack from her opponent just now. Ileana's hands were shaking. She felt that the attack was harder than she imagined. According to her, her opponent was no ordinary golem. On the side of the battle area, Davy was standing and watching them fight. Instantly, the golem approached Ileana. It changed its mode to attack mode and targeted Ileana. Instantly, the golem released red balls and attacked Ileana. Seeing this made Ileana dumbfounded. She didn't expect that her opponent could also deliver long-range attacks. Ileana protested to Davy because of his horrible handiwork. Davy, who was at the height of the battle area, just laughed and admitted that he was just making an ordinary golem. Moments later, Ileana seemed to have lost to the golem. Her body was held against the wall until she could no longer move. According to Ileana, this fight was rigged. The woman was very annoyed with Davy. She couldn't accept his golem using Circle 3 magic upwards. Ileana thought that his weapon could even destroy continents. Then Davy walked up to her and helped her to get free from the golem. Davy told her that he put magic crystals into it so that it could be strong like that. Princess Ileana grumbled and didn't want to talk to Davy anymore. Then she walked out of there feeling upset. Meanwhile, Davy smiled with satisfaction. Thanks to his golem, he got good data, but it looks like he needs a lot of improvement. That place was his private workshop located in the basement. It was part of the new lord's castle that was still under construction. Until now, the mansion Davy lived in was the hereditary residence of Baron Al-Assad's family and his mother. When Davy came to the place, he decided to build a new castle, because the previous one had been left alone for a long time, making it difficult to repair or add floors. Now, this would be Davy's new home. In the midst of construction, the precious princess of the Fallon Empire fought against the golem that Davy designed. It all started with her arrival a few days ago. That night, Ileana had a conversation with Davy. Ileana mentioned the rumors spread in Davy's territory about the two of them, but Davy responded casually and said that that was exactly what he was after. Hearing his answer irritated Ileana. Ileana asked Davy if the reason was because he was trying to increase the value of his territory. This was confirmed by Davy. Suddenly, Ileana was very emotional and stared businesslike at Davy. Davy was dumbfounded by the woman's response. Suddenly, Purcell appeared beside him and told him that Ileana was indeed an emotional person. But Purcell assured Davy that Ileana was actually a good hearted person. Ileana's princess did not know about Purcell's existence, but Purcell, who was sealed inside the Calderas, had watched her grow up. Then Ileana seemed hesitant to say anything. In a stammering tone, Ileana thanked Davy. She felt she owed him her life in the previous incident and felt she had to make things right. But according to Davy, she didn't need to do that. Davy just happened to save her while helping Winley. Then, Ileana also said that she had also awakened the Calderas thanks to Davy. If Davy thought about it, Ileana did build the contract, but she was only a master of Calderas and could not resurrect it into sword form. There could be several reasons for this sudden awakening. For example, she became stronger after the incident, or it became easier to awaken the Calderas because she was temporarily weakened. Calderas scolded Davy while pulling his collar. Calderas told Davy that he should have said something first before using that. Then Davy argued that he didn't have time for that because there were many victims falling every minute. Then Calderas asks where Perselk is. Davy glanced at Perselk, who was next to him. 
Davy realized that Calderas could not see Perselk. Davy could not tell her and only said that Perselk was fine. Suddenly, Calderas was very angry and thought that Davy had done something to Perselk. Calderas yelled at Perselk to give her an answer. Finally, Perselk asked Davy for permission to borrow the mana. Davy happily allowed her to take as much as she wanted. Then Perselk placed her palm on Davy's forehead. Slowly, the body of Perselk who was beside him was seen by Calderas. Suddenly, Calderas immediately stopped rebelling against Davy. Her eyes were wide open seeing Perselk's figure in front of her. Immediately, Calderas immediately embraced Perselk's body because she really missed her. Ileana was confused by what Calderas was doing in the air like that. Davy told her that Calderas was doing something important right now. Ileana had never seen Calderas behave like that. Ileana actually still had many questions for Davy, but she knew that Davy was not someone who would answer questions that easily. But because Davy felt guilty, so he would answer as best he could and told Ileana to ask him whatever it was. Without further ado, Ileana went straight to the point. She asked who Davy really was. Casually, Davy answered that he was the Prince of Raun, who was the biological son of the previous queen, Leni Alisiad. Hearing that answer upset Ileana so much that she kicked the table. That was not the point of the question. Davy just smiled innocently. Ileana growled and clenched her fists in annoyance at Davy. Then she got up from her chair. She showed Davy a sword. Davy took the sword and looked at it. Davy thought that the sword was heavy and inefficient, so it was difficult for an ordinary person to swing the sword because of its weight. But it was perfect for the heavy sword technique of the sword god, Harris. Ileana told him that it was the sword she usually used. According to Davy, if the quality is improved, then he doesn't think the weight is a problem. With frankness, Ileana made her request. Ileana asked Davy to teach her the heavy sword technique of the sword god, but Davy casually refused her request. Ileana stared at him and said that she had a way to make him unable to dodge. Then Ileana threw a document to Davy. It was an engagement document. Ileana threatened Davy that if he didn't teach her, she would continue with their engagement document. Maybe Davy was okay with that, but not the Imperial family. Ileana had thrown away her honor to come there. Ileana confirmed it once again. Ileana reminded him that she could be childish until the end. With a fake smile, Ileana dared Davy to test her. Seeing that made Davy unable to move. Perselk guessed that Davy was indecisive now. Then Davy rolled up the document. Ileana threatened him once again. She would not hesitate to send the engagement documents to the Rhone Kingdom officially. Ileana made sure that her father would allow her to marry whoever she wanted, even if it was a slave. Ileana provoked him, saying that her father would definitely not refuse if he knew that she was the rising ruler of the Heinz region on the eastern continent. Then, Ileana acted as if she really wanted to marry him. She did this to provoke Davy into helping her teach sword techniques. Davy thought that Ileana was a really reckless woman. Then Davy pushed Ileana and drove her home. Davy gently shooed her away and invited her to have a better conversation next time, but Ileana wasn't about to give in. The woman looked like a really angry and stubborn person. Then Ileana grabbed Davy by the collar and brought her face closer. She yelled at and threatened Davy. But from a distance, they looked like a couple making out. It was evening at Ileana's residence. She was in her room sitting at her dressing table, combing her hair. She was also accompanied by Calderas. The two of them were talking together. Calderas had not expected Davy to return the engagement documents. Then Calderas asked Ileana about her current fiancé. Ileana felt that there was no problem if it was him. According to her, the problem was on the other side. Ileana has not yet heard from her partner. Ileana looked up at the sky from her bedroom window and daydreamed for a while. Ileana thought that there was no choice but to try to persuade him no matter what, since the situation was like this. She would make sure Davy did it. The next morning, Ileana was already busy with her work. There was a stack of papers on her desk, but it turned out that she was doing her work in Davy's office. When Davy arrived at his office, he was surprised that Ileana was already there. Then Ileana smiled broadly at Davy while teasing him. Davy considers Ileana to be a stubborn and very determined woman. Although there are many things to describe her, 
Nothing can describe how determined Ileana's daughter was. After her declaration of war at that time, she came to Davy's place every day, even to the point of bringing her work to do in Davy's office. At the same time, Winley walked into Davy's office. She slammed the tray she was carrying on Ileana's desk. Winley was completely speechless at the sight of Ileana, who had been harassing Davy since yesterday. Even more so, bringing her work to be done in someone else's office. But Ileana only responded casually. Ileana tells her that Davy is not someone else to her. Seeing Ileana's behavior made Winley's emotions become fiery. She felt very emotional towards that woman. Davy and Perselk could only remain silent while looking at the two women who were arguing. Perselk said that Winsley was completely in the palm of Ileana's hand. While drinking her glass of tea, Ileana glanced to her side where Yulris was sitting on the sofa in Davy's office. Ileana was very curious about why Yulris was in the room. Yulris admitted that he was actually a close friend of Davy's, so it didn't matter if he was in the room. Hearing that confession made Ileana surprised. She didn't know when the two of them became close friends. This offended Ileana. Then Ileana approached Davy and asked him why he didn't want to be around her. Davy felt that if he was careless around her, then he would become the enemy of some people. Ileana forced Davy to befriend her and told him to talk casually. The situation there was chaotic. Davy and Ileana had a one on one conversation behind Yulris's back. Davy asked Ileana about her relationship with Yulris. Davy saw that the two of them were quite close. Then Winley whispered something to Davy. Winley told him about the engagement between Ileana's family and Yulris. Ileana, who heard that, immediately clarified that they were just old friends. Then Yulris persuaded Davy to stop by the Red Tower. Yulris looked at Davy with sparkling eyes as if pleading with him. It turned out that Yulris had a certain intention for his arrival. He wanted to do business with Davy, for example, something related to magic. As Davy had expected, Yulris must have been talking about non recitation magic. Although it sounded a little strange, but among the magic that Davy showed Yulris and he didn't know, he was most interested in the magic without recitation. Although Davy had given him some hints, it was not something that one could do easily. Yulris was relentless in his persuasion of Davy, like a man who wouldn't give up. Yulris admitted that he was obsessed with learning. Davy sighed. After all, Davy felt very grateful to Yulris for realizing his position and helping to keep what could be done from the magic tower a secret. Not long after, Davy's servants told him that something he had asked for had arrived and had been placed in the cellar. Seeing the servant, Ileana became confused. Winley told her that Amy was her brother's personal maid. Amy now helped her brother manage the territory and had recently received the title of Baroness. Ileana was instantly stunned to realize that. There is now a political war between two opposing camps within the royal court of Rhone. The camp of Marquis Patrice, who represents the monarchy, and Duke Barrietta, who represents the aristocrats. In addition, Davy also received reports that Duke Barrietta was secretly moving within his territory. Davy tried to anticipate what would happen in the future. Davy intends to observe it a little further. Then Davy decided to move now. Seeing Davy getting ready to leave, Yulris felt curious and asked him. Then Davy invited him to come along. Davy was sure that Yulris would also feel interested, because it was something that all alchemists were interested in. Ileana also did not want to be left behind. She took the initiative to offer to come with him. Finally, they went together. Arriving there, they were greeted by a small man with a long mustache. Davy felt that the place was getting higher and higher, while the three of them who were behind were just stunned to see that in front of them was a dwarf figure. It was the first time Ileana had seen a dwarf. Davy immediately introduced the three of them to the dwarf. Davy first introduced his younger sister named Winley. The dwarf realized that Winley was the person that Master Davy had always been proud of. Then he shook Winley's hand. He thought Winley was a graceful human. But Winley looked confused while looking at her brother. After that, Davy introduced Ileana and also Yulris, who were behind there. Then the dwarf told Davy that the elders of Golgota wanted to meet him. The dwarf said that the divine item was almost perfect. A divine item connected to the flare of the beginning. Davy did the basics and left the rest to the dwarf. 
It seemed that it could be perfected into embers of light without any problems. Dwarf offered to take him on a tour of the place, but Davy refused politely. Davy explained that the purpose of his arrival was because he heard that the material had arrived at the underground workshop. The dwarf immediately realized that what he meant was a giant warrior. Hearing this made the three of them feel curious about the giant warrior being talked about. Inside the dungeon was the giant warrior in question. Winley, Yulris, and Ileana looked utterly shocked as they held their heads up. Yulris's face was so shocked that his eyes widened. He asked Davy about it. Davy replied that it was a golem guard. Davy was looking at the tall and large golem. Golem is a giant made of steel or hardened clay. Golem is a very extraordinary weapon for magic circle wizards and alchemist technical skills. It is known that there are several countries that use golem units in battle. After seeing the golem, Yulris thought that a golem with such a height was a level one golem. Then Yulris told Davy that to take care of the golem, they had to spend a lot of money. Davy explained that it was a golem that protected the place where the curse that made Heinz's region dry. According to Davy, the cost to take care of the golem is not too much because Davy only recycles and reuses it. Davy added that he has built a workshop with this, so Davy doesn't really care if it costs a lot to take care of it. Davy says that having a magnificent personal workshop is every man's dream. Davy was seen playing with the golem. Seeing the movement of the golem ordered by Davy made Yurlis very surprised, because it was the first time he saw a golem move like that, and according to Yurlis, the golem had the ability to run recharging magic. Then Davy offered Princess Ileana to train against the golem, and Davy would grant Ileana any request, except to teach the god of swordsmanship. Princess Ileana accepted Davy's offer to train against the golem, but Ileana thought that the golem would be destroyed if it fought with her. Davy didn't mind if the golem would indeed be destroyed because then he would know that the golem's abilities were only that limited. Princess Ileana thought that the golem looked expensive, and she would not easily fight the golem. Princess Ileana was seen preparing to fight the golem. Instantly, Ileana was defeated by the golem easily. Ileana was very surprised by her defeat. She did not expect to be defeated by the metal blob. Davy had gotten a lot of the data he needed after seeing the results of Ileana's defeat of the golem, because he thought there were limits to what he had created. Princess Ileana told Davy that she felt like she was being oppressed. After the fight was over, Ileana promised Davy to grant her one request. Then Davy was willing to grant Ileana's request, except for the request to teach Ileana swordsmanship. Then Ileana told Davy that she would think about her request first. Davy will make more golems in the future. Davy intends to make five golems after the prototype is perfect. Knowing that Davy will make a large number of golems, Ileana wants Davy to give her one golem. Then Davy explained to Ileana that to make a golem costs a lot of money, but Ileana also said that she would not ask for a golem from Davy for free. Ileana intended to buy the golem that Davy would later make. Ileana said if she had a lot of money so it didn't matter if she bought the golem. It seems that Davy strongly objected to Ileana's request, because Davy did not intend to sell the golem he made. Knowing that Davy did not intend to sell the golem made Ileana very upset, and thought that Davy was very stingy. Ileana added that this place was filled with greedy people. By evening, Davy had completed the protective golem for the territory. Davy explained that the prototype Megatron was the result of the region's gradual development. Although Davy was considered a symbol of greed, he did not care because the day of Decepticon perfection was at hand. Currently, Davy had problems with the battle data, but at least Davy was lucky that the golem was strong enough to fight Princess Ileana. However, Davy could not let this golem appear in a world like this because that would be a problem. Suddenly, Ileana appeared in front of Davy. Davy was a little surprised because Ileana acted like a friend he was already familiar with. Then Ileana said that she had decided to be friends with Davy. Ileana added that she could find Davy's whereabouts thanks to being told by Chamberlain. Davy said that if he had recently learned about Ileana's personality, he thought that Princess Ileana's approach to befriend him was a little reckless, but Davy still respected Ileana's intentions. 
Davy wanted to know what Ileana's purpose and reason for coming to see him, Ileana said that she came just to talk to Davy. But Calderas told Davy that Ileana had lied. Calderas thought that there was another purpose for Ileana's arrival. It seemed like Ileana was curious about what Davy was working on at the moment. Then Davy told Ileana that he was in the process of developing Golem, and he wanted to use ancient magic. Ileana thought that Davy had worked hard to make the Golem. Ileana added that she had also tried hard, but still could not defeat the Golem. Davy explained to Ileana that if all her magic was collected, then it would be more efficient than Master Grade and could even exceed it. Davy thought that Megatron deserved such a statement. But he also praised Princess Ileana for being great because Ileana, who was still Inspector Grade, could survive against Megatron, who was Master Grade. Then Davy took Princess Ileana out for a walk to enjoy the nice night weather. At night, in a park not far from Davy's residence, he invited Ileana to practice swordsmanship. Ileana was confused and a little curious why Davy suddenly wanted to teach her, so she immediately asked Davy why. In a relaxed tone, Davy admitted that he only wanted to see Ileana's skills at a glance. Perselk, who sat on the wooden sword, teased Davy for his friendly nature towards Ileana. But Davy admitted that he was just providing a barrier so that it wouldn't be a problem later. It was also because Davy felt a little indebted to him. Ileana tried to focus. She caught her breath first. This was a mock battle between a wooden sword and a divine sword. On the face of it, it wasn't fair at all. But in reality, this was the difference in ability between Ileana and Davy. Then Ileana stared intently at Davy and prepared to begin. Davy waved his finger to give Ileana the code to attack first. With that, Ileana immediately jumped towards Davy while raising her sword high. Ileana unleashed a barrage of attacks on Davy, but with great ease, Davy dodged all the attacks. Davy recognized that the woman was very fast in attacking and moving. Moreover, Ileana used a heavy sword. Davy felt like his head was spinning just by looking at her movements. Then Davy showed his sword skills to Ileana. With that skill, Davy parried Ileana's attack and made Ileana's body fall far back. As a result of the attack, Ileana felt pain in her left side. Ileana didn't realize when Davy made the parry just now. Meanwhile, none of her attacks hit Davy at all. Ileana became very curious as to how Davy did that which made her very annoyed. To be sure here, Davy dodged all her attacks with ease. Ileana bit her lip as her emotions surged. Finally, Ileana decided to attack Davy relentlessly so that Davy would have no chance to dodge. The attack made Davy slowly move back because this time the attack from the woman was quite strong. Davy even stumbled. Ileana's attack was truly extraordinary. According to Davy, if her attack was at this level, then the Megatron probably wouldn't be able to withstand it. It was now clear that Ileana was many times stronger when using the Divine Sword. Megatron won because Ileana used an ordinary sword. If not for that, Davy was sure that Megatron would have become a pile of garbage. Davy then attacked Ileana using the Boulder Crush technique. Ileana's body was instantly knocked away, but that did not make Ileana give up. She was still very excited about the fight. Without thinking, Ileana immediately attacked her again. But no matter how hard Ileana tried to attack Davy, it didn't work. While continuing to fend off attacks from Ileana, Davy noticed the look on the woman's face. Ileana's anxiety was clearly visible on her face. Instantly, Ileana pulled out the legendary sword technique, Enormous Mountain Cleaver. The technique caused such a huge explosion that it created a huge hole in the ground. Fortunately, Davy managed to avoid the attack. Davy was amazed. Perselk realized that it was the same technique when Davy fought the vampire named Sherry. Whereas Davy alone took ten years to mimic it, Ileana could quickly learn it. Davy thought that the woman really had a great talent. Davy clapped his hands in praise of Ileana's prowess. Then Davy advised her to stop the training here as they had made quite a mess. But Ileana didn't care about that. She felt that this exercise should continue. Then Davy woke her up by tickling Ileana's hips until she fell limp. Instantly, the woman burst into tears. Ileana didn't want to stop practicing because she had worked so hard for this opportunity. Ileana didn't want to end it without doing anything. Then Ileana screamed loudly to release all her emotions. 
Suddenly, Davy was shocked and immediately calmed her cries. Perselk did not expect Davy to make Ileana cry like that. Davy felt bad about it. Perselk told Davy to speak in a better tone to Ileana. Davy turned his face away and exhaled. Finally, he decided to teach her. Then Davy stood in front of Ileana, who still hadn't stopped crying. Then he told Ileana to pay close attention to him. Suddenly, Ileana immediately stopped crying and observed Davy carefully. Davy showed Ileana the various sword techniques he had mastered. Davy explained that swordsmanship that is like a stream of water makes one unable to protect oneself on the same part over and over again. Hearing that explanation, Ileana thought that Davy did not want to admit that Heavy Sword had many weaknesses in swordsmanship. Ileana lowered her head and began to cry. She thought that what Davy meant was that Heavy Sword was just an ancient and useless art. Then Davy snapped his fingers on Ileana's forehead to wake her up. Suddenly, Ileana screamed in pain. Davy reminded him to pay close attention. Davy emphasized that there is no swordsmanship that can strike all opponents perfectly. It was the same with the sword god's swordsmanship. Davy would gently point out what Ileana had missed. Once again, Davy warned her to pay attention. Davy showed Ileana two different sword techniques. Ileana was instantly surprised to see that the last technique had a huge effect despite its slow movement. She could now see the difference between the two techniques Davy had just shown her. Heavy sword is swordsmanship that focuses on the power to demonstrate tremendous destructive power through simple movements. Therefore, it was common knowledge that the power released depended on the weight of the sword. But Ileana still didn't believe it and thought that it was impossible. Ileana was curious as to how the damage dealt by such slow sword movements could be the same as that of a divine sword. Incredible destructive power can be released so easily with just a sharp movement. Because of this, the heavy sword god's sword was applied like that to avoid a different flow of movement. Davy explained to Ileana that the attack was almost the same as the time it took to reach its full speed. An example would be how long it takes a horse carrying a carriage to reach its full speed. There is a limit to the power depending on the weight. It could be considered that this was the way of heavy sword. Davy raised his sword with one index finger. He said that the power of the heavy sword followed the laws of physics. However, they would add the use of mana to that principle. They could adjust the weight of the sword or increase the speed using mana. Hearing that explanation, Ileana concluded that she could adjust the speed of the heavy sword depending on her mana mastery. Davy sighed. He was relieved that she finally understood. Then Davy told him that the advantage of the heavy sword was its destructive power and simplicity, but it could also be an obvious weakness. It can be an unstable sword when it only focuses on destructive power. Then Davy asked Ileana's opinion about the sword's art form disappearing like it never existed. But Ileana was silent for a moment, thinking about her answer. That is because they simply followed and imitated the swordsmanship of the sword god as they saw it. Therefore, future generations were unaware of the fundamentals of the sword art form. Even so, it is still the sword art form with the most destructive power. It is still called the best form despite its imperfect form in the present. But it would be difficult for Ileana to understand all of this at once. But at least if she could realize a few things, then she would surpass the great wall of becoming a master. After Davy explained in detail, Elena finally understood. Then Ileana expressed her gratitude to Davy, even though Davy didn't feel if he didn't do anything. After that, Davy changed the conversation. Davy said that every time he looked at Ileana, Davy saw her as scared as if she was being chased by something. Ileana immediately widened her eyes in surprise at Davy's words. Ileana was immediately evasive and told Davy that he was mistaken. But the woman couldn't lie. Davy said that there was nothing to hide between them. Davy also told her that it was the best decision to talk while there was a chance. Ileana was silent for a moment. She was hesitant to say it. Unexpectedly, Ileana asked Davy if he wanted to be her partner. Instantly, the atmosphere became silent. The wooden sword in Davy's hand immediately fell down because he was surprised by the woman's question. Then Ileana said that the reason was because she needed Davy's strength. Davy immediately rejected it.
Davy asked Ileana what kind of power the princess of the most powerful country did not have. Moreover, Ileana has many sword masters who will move according to her orders. But Ileana tells him that she can't borrow their powers. Ileana said that she had to be twenty years old or younger to qualify, so they were all breaking the rules. That left Davy feeling confused. Flashback to Apollon telling Davy a story from the past. With great enthusiasm, Apollon tells Davy about a Celtic order called Last Wisp. Apollon explains that the figure is a protector for the population, and even protects the continent from unknown threats. Davy was very focused on listening to the story. Normally, Davy would ignore what Apollon was talking about, but the story he told this time was true and interesting to Davy. Last Wisp, though it was called by various names, but it referred to an order of knights who removed threats to the continent secretly. The peace that was secured after the sword god, Hares killed the demon king, can be attributed to the secret role of these knights. Moreover, one of their duties is to secure potential heroes and raise the seeds of these heroes. Back to where Davy is with Ileana. Davy concludes that what it means is that Ileana needs someone to help her not have a partner for the test. This was confirmed by Ileana. Ileana admitted that she was desperately looking for her partner, but she didn't find him either. Therefore, Ileana needs help from a strong person, since she cannot be strong. Davy could sense a trap, but Ileana has no choice but to find a new partner. Perselk told Davy that the roots of the story were beginning to connect. Davy glanced with a smile at her. According to Davy, Ileana can't just invite strong people with power at will, but there is a secret order for the younger generation who will carry the burden of the future. As a member of a secret order of knights, Ileana has been studying and honing her powers all this time. For whatever reason, Ileana has put herself in a dangerous and unfavorable position. But Ileana gave up. She told Davy to forget about the couple's conversation. Ileana had enough of learning something important today thanks to Davy. Then Ileana said goodbye to Davy as she turned to leave the place. Perselk suspected that the order of knights fighting the unknown world threat would become something more dangerous than the current situation. According to Perselk, Davy had made the right decision by rejecting her. Davy was silent as he clenched his fists. Suddenly Davy called out to Ileana and made her stop her steps. Davy seemed to be interested in Ileana's offer. Then Davy told Ileana that he was willing to help her take the exam for the knight order. Davy promised to help her as much as he could. Davy's statement made Perselk upset because she ignored her. As for Ileana, she looked very dumbfounded and just stared at Davy as if she couldn't believe what he had just said. But before that, there were a few things Davy had to ask Ileana. Davy confirmed that the main purpose of his order was to hunt down dangerous and deviant demon spirits. Not only that, Davy also tried to confirm if there were many people in the order. Then Ileana confirmed all of Davy's questions. Instantly, Davy laughed slyly. Davy looked like he was devising a plan. Arriving home, Davy immediately lay down on the bed. Davy looked very happy and felt good. He thought this was a great advantage, but Davy regretted that it still couldn't appear in this world. That was because the Megatron was something completely different from Moongrass or Stigmata. If it was perfect, then it would be the birth of a master level war weapon. That way, there would be trouble all over the continent. After all, the world wouldn't be fussing about nukes if it was just an ordinary weapon. Davy explained to Perselk that there was a limit to the battle data that the Megatron could collect. Therefore, they could utilize those people. According to Davy, it was the perfect opportunity to collect data. If the golems became stronger, then the territorial defense system would also grow. Davy was sure that there would be stronger people gathered than during the swordsmanship competition. Not only that, there was even a possibility that they could meet directly with the demon spirit. Perselk realized that what Davy had in mind was only about the development of the region. Since that night, Ileana never bothered Davy like she used to. Davy thought that maybe Ileana was confused because she received his request quickly or just tired. But after saying that they would meet again in two weeks, Ileana left looking tired and did not come back to Davy's place. 
Davy thought that Ileana was busy with all her work. Time flies, and it doesn't feel like two weeks have passed. Sometimes time really does go slow, but sometimes it goes fast. But that didn't mean Davy had time to relax. Amy approached Davy, who was pensive in front of the window. Amy invited him to start the discussion. Amy informed us that there was an altercation where one person acted violently first and the other person pulled out a gun. It was a small insult that triggered the fight. Then Amy asked Davy for his opinion. Without thinking, Davy told him to just throw them in jail because they had both acted violently. Unlike the previous residents of the region who had adjusted well, Davy was driven crazy by taking care of the complaints and wishes of the recently arrived residents. Although they were all treated well, more and more problems arose as more people arrived. Then Amy read out the next issue, which was a custody request between the two women. Both women insisted on claiming that they were the biological mother. Davy rests his chin on the problem. Davy asked Amy to contact the Alchemist Association for answers. Then the third information conveyed by Amy was that the Piatrod merchants sent her a gift. They intend to buy a large area of undeveloped land. Hearing that irritated Davy. Davy quipped that he was not a real estate agent. Finally, he ignored the matter. One of the waitresses in Davy's office sounded like she was chuckling at Davy's words. Suddenly, all attention was immediately focused on the waiter. The butler beside her immediately gave the code for the waiter to immediately apologize to Mr. Davy. The butler bowed and apologized to Davy profusely. The butler also apologized for not educating him properly. Then the butler sent the woman out of the room. Seeing that, Davy calmed the butler down because he didn't think he needed to be like that. Davy said that the butler was allowed to laugh. He is not too strict in such matters. Davy called the waiter by his name. Yuri. Suddenly the waitress was surprised that Davy knew her name. Then Davy made small talk and complimented her on how good the tea was. Davy even thanked her. Hearing that, Yuri's maid became very excited. The butler who was behind her immediately gave the code to awaken Yuri's maid. Then Yuri's maid walked out of Davy's office. Davy reminded the butler not to be so strict, but the butler felt that he should teach the servants. Davy sighed. He left the butler to do as he wished. Yuri's maid was still standing in front of the outer door of Davy's study. There was a smile on her lips. She seemed to be having a good time. Then Yuri's maid walked down the hallway humming. She was in a good mood. Perselk was stunned to see a beam of light on Davy's face. Then Davy said that he had met an upper middle class spiritualist. He thinks this is not bad. Instantly, Davy told Amy to continue the discussion that was interrupted just now. Just like that, the two-week appointment day came sooner than expected. Davy spent time in taking care of his territory. Inside his study, Davy was communicating with one of the men from inside the magic ball. He is Baron Gorneo. The man said that Davy was very lucky. The Baron told him that there was almost an assassination of the Imperial family in the Ordem region. In Davy's mind, he felt happy to see the man's face again after so long. While Davy went through various situations after returning to Heinz territory, Baron Gorneo chose to stay in the Lindessa Empire due to the work of the Disease Prevention Unit. The Baron recounted that on that day, there was a lightning shower in the forest near Ordem territory. Members of the Lindessa Imperial family managed to escape the attack thanks to the lightning rain. To his surprise, the thunderbolt slaughtered all the assassins that were there. Thanks to that incident, the chariot survived. But unfortunately, all the assassins' corpses were burnt to the point of confusion in the investigation. Davy just chuckled. In his mind, Davy admitted that it was his fault. At the time, Davy thought that the train belonged to the Imperial family. But who would have thought it was the Lindessa Empire? According to Davy, this was a story that could lead to a big war. Davy feels that this is what is called one can achieve something through mere coincidence. The Baron made it clear that he was visiting the kingdom of Lindes to treat the youngest princess there. When the Baron's work was done, he intended to spread Davy's achievements. Suddenly, Davy was shocked and told the Baron that he didn't need to do that. But the Baron was adamantly against it. Baron tried to make Davy realize that he was a great prince with many achievements. According to Baron, Davy should be recognized for all his achievements though Davy felt that he really didn't need that. 
he thinks it will only make people more wary of him. For the sake of his future, Davy would be more helpful if he could live a quiet life. But for Baron Gornio, who was serious about drugs, there was no way he would understand that. Then the Baron ended the conversation, looking forward to meeting Davy again. The Baron immediately hung up the call. Not long after, while Davy was relaxing on his couch, Ileana suddenly appeared from outside the window. Suddenly, Davy became surprised and shouted for the castle guard. Suddenly, Ileana covered Davy's screaming mouth. It was now the promised two weeks. Ileana was annoyed with Davy because he never wrote back to her. I don't know if it was because Ileana felt that she owed Davy something, but she kept asking if there was anything Davy needed. From Davy's perspective, it's not that he's accepting Ileana's request in her favor, but it's not important to him. Ileana made it clear that she was giving Davy one last chance to turn her down if he didn't want to. But before that, Davy wanted to make sure of one thing. Davy asked her if it would be okay for the secret night organization to see him at the test site. Ileana assured him that it wouldn't be a problem because Ileana intended to use the opportunity at hand. But Davy did not understand what she meant by opportunity. Ileana explained that the basic rule of the last wisp was to keep its working secret, but developing the organization was a top priority. That's why each member is allowed to bring in one person like a once-in-a-lifetime disciple. Perselk did not expect Ileana to use this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity on Davy. Perselk thought that Davy would feel overwhelmed by it. However, it was quite the opposite. Davy thought it must be Ileana who was burdened. Since his curiosity had been answered, Davy invited Ileana to leave now. Then Davy prepared his tools that he would bring. Davy took something similar to Rubik. Seeing this, Ileana asked him what he was carrying. Smiling at her, Davy replied that it was Megatron MK2, the golem guardian that fought Ileana before. Suddenly, Ileana was dumbfounded to realize that. Perselk was sure that Ileana was surprised to find out that the horrible weapon had become something that could be carried like a toy. Thinking about it made Ileana very frustrated and felt that her common sense was destroyed when she was with Davy. Without further ado, Ileana asked him to leave using her teleportation artifact. Then they held hands together and slowly disappeared from that place.